Good evening, football fans. Welcome to the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. I am Mikey Dunn, joined by Carl Rubin as we get set to bring you Chessmont National, National Division play. It's the undefeated Downingtown West <laughs> Whippets playing host to the one-loss Coatesville Red Raiders in a game that could decide the Chessmont National Division. Carl, tell us about the visiting Coatesville Red Raiders. Okay, Mikey, Coatesville Red Raiders, led by their senior quarterback, Ricky Ortega, a Villanova recruit who's been one of the most accomplished quarterbacks in the state in state history. Ricky's been battling a nagging foot injury for most of the season, but he's starting to feel better, and he's going, he is going, I believe, to have to run the football tonight, Mikey, to help create some more weapons for Coatesville in the run game. Coatesville's other big star player is wide receiver, defensive back, punt kickoff returner, Dupree Bryant, who can do it all, Mikey. He has 30 catches for 435 yards and 10 touchdowns. And he has a punt return, kick return, and interception return for a touchdown. He's a threat anytime uh, he touches the football. The running backs, they have uh, emerging sophomore Ashan Wesley, who's had a, who had a great game last week. He's run for 46 carries for 360 yards, 306 yards, and two touchdowns. He had 127 yards, Mikey, in the first half. So look for him to have another big game. Also, their junior running back, Demetrius McLean Jackson, who's making an impact also in the running game. He has 45 carries this year for 333 yards and six touchdowns. Look for Coatesville to use an up-tempo approach, Mikey, tr trying to tire out the Whippets defense. Um, Ricky, talking about Ricky Ortego, um, Danny, the Downingtown West team, he has played – in his four years here, this is the best Downingtown West team he's played. Ricky has 27 carries this year for 57 yards. Sorry, but Carl, that's actually his record in his three oh, wins yeah, three against years. I'm sorry. Downingtown this is, West. This is his three-year uh, totals. He has, against Downingtown West, he has 27 carries for 57 yards and one touchdown, 29 passes completed and 42 attempts. 502 passing yards, eight TDs, and no interceptions. So, um, a big, big game. Uh, they're averaging uh, almost 35 points a game while giving up only 12. And their only loss was to Harrisburg, which was the first game of the season. And, folks, this is the Chessmont Game of the Week pregame show brought to you by the Red Run Challenge. That's right. The fourth annual Red Run Challenge takes place on December 7th before the famous Coatesville Christmas Parade. Registration is now open. So go to https colon backslash backslash runsignup.com slash rrc4 and register today. Cash awards to the top racers and medals by age group, as well as prizes for the most festive participants. So grab your tutu, your costume, or your holiday bling, lace up your sneaks, and race for the win. The proceeds from this festive 5K race and walk go 100% to helping young adults in Chester County with their next step in life. We see the potential in all. Come for the race, stay for the parade. And Carl, it is a... Coach team, we said, who's having uh, a good year, uh, not as strong a year as Red Raider fans are used to. We'll get a little bit more into the stats that they've had this season, but they're going up against a Downingtown West team that is having their best season in years. They are ranked number two in the Philly.com rankings. Coachville is ranked uh, fourth. This is a Downingtown West team that comes in at 8-0 and overall, 2-0 and in divisional play. They went 11 and 2 last year, Carl, and actually made it to the semifinals. And that was with senior quarterback Will Howard being hurt. Talking about Will Howard, Carl, he is the Kansas State recruit. He's got 1,374 yards passing this year, 18 touchdowns, four interceptions. He's run for seven touchdowns. He is joined in the backfield by senior Tyreek Lewis. 118 carries, 983 yards, 17 touchdowns on the ground, four receiving touchdowns. Usually you might see the Downingtown just having a running back, quarterback. Who are they going to throw the ball to? They have two really strong options, Carl. They have Alex Rosano, who has 24 catches for 475 yards and three touchdowns. He's also carried the ball 23 times, got 282 yards and a touchdown. And then Julian Williams, Carl, he is Downingtown's version of Dupree Bryant. Not saying he's quite at that level, but he's pretty close. 
19 catches, 327 yards, and four touchdowns, two kickoff return touchdowns, and a punt return touchdown. So, Carl, you know me. I love my special teams. Special teams is going to come in big tonight as far as the return games. Now, downtown West, the last few games, has struggled a little bit with turnovers. They've turned it over six times the last two weeks, minus seven turnover ratio in the last three games overall against Coatesville. Um, they come in averaging... 41 points a game, allowing 18. They get 418 yards. They give up 302. They have lost six fumbles, recovered seven. They have five non-offensive touchdowns this season. So, Carl, special teams, big plays defensively are really going to come into play tonight more than you see in a regular game. Yeah, I agree, mate, Mikey. Uh, my three keys to victory for tonight for Coatesville, uh, number one, get off the field on third and fourth down. Uh, on defense, uh, turnovers, which you just talked about. Whoever wins the turnover batter could certainly win this game. And then uh, you talked a lot about it already, the special teams. Which team is going to make the bigger impact? And we know that somewhere along the line in this game, special teams could definitely play a big role in who wins this football game, Mikey. All right, great, Carl. The, we saw in Downingtown's matchup against Bishop Shanahan, Every kickoff went into the end zone, which means it's automatically a touchback. But when they played Downingtown East, there was two or three kicks that were returnable. And if you give Dupree Bryant an opportunity, he will score. He did have a return called back last week in their win against Shanahan. Um, but it's going to be really interesting to see what happens uh, in special teams. You have two quarterbacks that are two of the best I think we've ever seen in our years covering Chessmont football games. You have... Uh, Howard, you have Ortega, uh, both of them in an article on Philly.com this week said they don't care if they win 10-7, to 14-7, they just want the win, and that's what you have to look at. It's a, a win is a win, and speaking of winning, that is what Ricky Ortega has done. Carl, he has never lost a Chessmont game, and again, against Downingtown uh, West in the last three years, Coachville won all three. They've outscored Downingtown 131-29. to Outgained them 1,007 yards to 466. They have one turnover. Downingtown West has eight. And last year against Coatesville, Carl, we saw Will Howard get injured and miss the rest of the season. So it's definitely a game that Will Howard is going uh, to want. He got the win against their rivals, Downingtown East. He wants the win against Coatesville. And if Downingtown West wins tonight, they win the Chessmont National Division, something they have not done in several years as Coatesville has won the last uh, last couple, and they've won the district, Carl, two years running, trying to make it three straight. Yeah, no question, Mikey. This is their big chance to upset Coatesville. This game is very even, um, and uh, it could go either way. And Downtown West definitely has enough talent to beat this Coatesville Red Raider team. Carl West going for their first divisional win since 2013. Now, if Coatesville wins, things get very interesting because West beat Downingtown East. Coatesville plays Downingtown East next week, so you could have some interesting tiebreakers that we'll, we'll deal with uh, next week if we need to. Um, discussion of how the teams got here, Carl. You have Coatesville starting the season off with a loss at Harrisburg, excuse me, at home to Harrisburg, the team that beat them last year in the playoffs. Week two, they didn't play a game because uh, they could not find an opponent due to the reshuffling of the uh, Chessmont divisions. They beat Cumberland Valley 28-7. to That's the game where you saw Ortega first get injured. Uh, they played against Henderson. Uh, Ortega didn't really show any signs of uh, being, you know, the injury affecting him that much. That's the game where he set the record for passing guards in Chessmont, passing Pat Devlin. Against Unionville, that's when you saw Ortega leave the game. They were able to defeat Unionville despite being outgained 365 to 312. Uh, Ricky Ortega missed the game against Ruston, where the Red Raiders won 36-7. It was Harrison Zuzzi uh, in at quarterback. Uh, in that game, you had Dupree Bryant set the receiving touchdown record for Southeastern Pennsylvania, uh, which was a 47-year-old record. Uh, Coach Phil Carls, we just see, has uh, elected to receive down to us, won the toss, they deferred. We will continue with the Red Run Challenge pregame show after we hear the Star Spangled Banner played by the Downingtown West Marching Band.
Down in town West and Coach Bowl marching band performing the Star Spangled Banner. It's the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. Live at Kottmeyer Stadium in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. It is the undefeated Downingtown West Whippets playing host to the one loss Coatesville Red Raiders. To finish going over Coatesville's season, they defeated Avagrove 48-3 in Week 7. And they defeated Bishop Shanahan at the game scene on Chase, uh, ChessmontFootball.com by a score of 47-17. to 17. Carl, this is a Coachville defense whose starters have not given up a touchdown in 11 quarters. But they're going up against a very strong Downingtown West team who had a tough start to the schedule, uh, season uh, with their schedule. But they won all those games defeating Garnet Valley, Central Buck South, and the Chamonix. Also then defeated Perkiomen Valley, got into their conference schedule, uh, defeating Oxford, then Shanahan in a game seen on ChessmontFootball.com. A big win in the Chessmont game of the, uh, in the Battle of the Brandywine, as seen on the Chessmont game of the week on ChessmontFootball.com. The highest scoring Battle of the Brandywine ever, 63 to 35, and then last week defeated a very strong Westchester East team, 50 to 27. But those were the previous games, Carl. It's time to focus on this one as the Whippets will be kicking off. And that ball does not go into the end zone. That was one of our keys, Carl. Not let Bryant have returns. And he's got room to run. He's going to be tackled at the 36-yard line. Carl, you gave your keys to the game for Coatesville. My keys for Downingtown West do not get off to a slow start. They had senior night. You had your players getting warmed up and then kind of standing there for a ceremony. Talking with Pete Giovanni from the Daily Local, he said he was surprised they were doing that. My next key... Sound tackling. It's a Coatesville team that is very strong at breaking tackles. And then offensively, do not turn the ball over, which has been a problem of late. Ortega in the shotgun. And he throws a little bubble screen to Dupree Bryant. And he gets an easy nine yards, Carl. You put the ball in your playmaker's hands. Absolutely, Mikey. And they, they did on that play. Very well executed play. And a quick nine-yard gain. Good start for Coatesville. Folks, and we want to thank you for tuning in to the uh, Red Run Challenge pregame show. But we are now live in game action. Second and two, as they said, he stepped out of bounds after an eight-yard gain. Take a drops back. Has a receiver open. It's going to be enough for a first down. That's DeMonte Reason. Again, like I talked about in the in the opener, it's the, they're uh, using the um, using the uh, quick uh, offense here, hurry up offense, trying to tire out Downingtown West. And that's going to be a big tackle by Sean Pelkinson, the senior. Carl, he was not faked out, and he took Ortega down. Pelkinson no. going to Georgia Southern. Yeah, Pelkinson makes a great play here. There's an option there, and Ricky, Ricky was going to run it, but Pelkinson was in his way and tackles him for a big loss. Second and 14. Ortega in the shotgun. No one in the backfield with him. Four receivers split out to the left side of the line of scrimmage. Ortega drops back. Pressure in his face again. He's looking to run. Said he completes it to an open receiver who's got some room to run. It's going to be a Coatesville first down, and it might be a Coatesville touchdown, but a game-saving tackle inside the five-yard line. Carl, that's what makes Ortega great. He does not worry when he feels the pressure right in his face. He started to run. He had a receiver who was wide open with plenty of space, and that Coatesville speed, Carl, that is why they're always such a tough team to beat. They have speed that cannot be matched. Absolutely, Mike. A great play by Ortega. Abdul Stewart along the side wing, going almost all the way in for a touchdown. Again, terrific, terrific play. The four wide receiver out worked perfectly for them as they used a the receiver who was uh, for a short pass, but Ricky Ortega had time to throw, and that was a big big reason why that play worked. And Carl, I don't believe Coach had the right personnel on the field, and they already have to call, to call a, timeout. a timeout. So with 10.37 left to go in the game, Coachville has a first and goal from the two-yard line. The score is nothing-nothing. It's the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. Buying, selling, or renting a home is an important transaction, and who you choose to represent you and your family matters. The Matt Gorham Group has a track record of success having sold the most homes in the Coatesville area in the past 15 years. We are local experts who grew up here, live here, and serve here. 
please call the Matt Gorham Group for your local real estate needs at 610 Bald Guy. Yes, that's 610 Bald Guy. Or visit callthebaldguy.com. The Matt Gorham Group says, Go Red Raiders! Carl, downtown West has given up some points this year. Now, in a lot of the games they played, they had a huge lead and they had backups in, but they don't want to give up points on the opening drive. And it looks like that's what they've done. It is a Coatesville Red Raider touchdown. Ricky Ortega scores on the quarterback sneak on the opening drive. If you're a Red Raider fan, exactly how you wanted to start, Carl. Absolutely, Mikey. But very well executed. They had one negative play, but everything else worked beautifully. And Ricky Ortega takes it in. And you can tell he's, he seems to be moving better, Mikey, in this game. Carl Coachville looking like they have personnel issues again as the player is getting on the field late. They do still have 11 seconds left on the play clock, but that's two times in a very short period of time where they do not have enough personnel on the field. Extra point is up. It is good. Coachville leads by a score of 7 to nothing. Well, down until West answer, we'll find out after this word from Washington Hose Company number one. The Washington Hose Company is located at 376 East Lincoln Highway, serving the city of Coatesville and the surrounding communities for almost 150 years. Our dedicated EMS staff of volunteer and career are proud to provide EMS services 24-7, 365 days a year. WHC offers first aid, CPR, AD, babysitting, and several other training for first aid and certification classes. To take a class or volunteer, please contact us at 610-384-6464. Be safe. We are back on ChessMontFootball.com for the ChessMont Game of the Week, and it's the Coatesville Red Raiders leading by a score of 7 0. Let's see how they took that 7 0 lead with an instant replay. So, Carl, you can tell that the Red Raiders weren't afraid after Patrick Mahomes had his injury last night. Yeah, absolutely. Quarterback seek still the most effective way to get one yard or two yards if you need it. And, folks, we want to thank all of you that voted in the Chessmont FB Twitter poll that saw 630 votes, 52% saying Coatesville will win this game tonight. And the up man takes the return. And the Whippets will start the drive on their own 25. That was Alex Rosano on the return. Carl Coachville did what they wanted to do. They kept the ball out of Julian Williams' hands. Yes, they did, Mikey, and the kick was up high enough where they could get under the coverage and stop Alex Rosano from making a big play. So uh, a special time, a special ta time win for uh, Coatesville on that one. So the Whippets are led by senior quarterback and Kansas State recruit Will Howard, also led by senior running back Tariq Lewis. I formation. Howard drops back, and they're going for the home run on the first play. And it is incomplete. Dupree Bryant in coverage. The Whippet faithful calling for pass interference. There was some hand fighting, Carl, but I believe it was by both teams. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, they could have called that one, but you, you got to give Dupree Bryant credit for being right there and a gutsy call by the Downingtown West there on the first play. And they were oh. throwing that no matter what, Carl, because it's not as though there was an open receiver. Bryant was right there. Yeah, but to go up against Brian on that first play shows a lot of guts because you know he has the speed to stay with him. Offsides on Coatesville. Carl, we've, we've said numerous times over the years penalties have been a problem for Coatesville. They were very clean against Bishop Shanahan. I believe they had only two or three flags in that game. Frank Johnson jumped on that play, Mikey, causing the five-yard penalty. And that's something that helps the Whippets because, as you said, they, they did the gutsy first down play call. They didn't get it. They were facing a second and long, now second and five. Howard under center. That's an option. Lewis gets the first down. Very well executed play there as he fakes, fakes the ball in and throws to Tariq, runs it to Tariq Lewis, who gets the first down. I do want to note, it's going to be interesting whenever any visiting, uh, whenever opposing player ends up on the sideline because these teams did a lot of trash talking on social media tonight, Carl. And we've seen over the years these teams have gotten very fired up and very feisty. 
to come down to execution. First and 10, ball on the 37. Howard drops back. His man is not open. He throws it up and it's almost intercepted. The receiver playing more of a defensive back there. Again, Dupree Bryant right there, Mikey. Carl, I don't know why you go after the most talented player on the opposition. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be interesting to see what Dupree plays in college, whether he'll play offense or defense. He could do either. He will be going to Villanova with Ricky Ortega. I mean, they have two very talented receivers. They do not need to just go to one. That contact looked early, Carl, but again, no flag, Carl. That time, uh, I definitely feel as though there should have been pass interference as Bryant got there well before the ball. The other one thought was a good no call. Yeah, I agree, Mikey, but the, the fact is they're going, they're going against Dupree Bryant, and he's always going to probably be there to uh, disrupt the pup play. I don't know if I understand the logic there, but I believe on that one they should have had the penalty. But the other two times they threw it at Bryant, he had good coverage. Third and ten. Whippets looking to answer Coatesville with the score of their own on their opening drive. Howard drops back. And he's got a ball off the fingertips of Rosano. Carl, you've got to convert the big plays when you have a chance. Rosano had a step on his man. He did. That was a touchdown, Mikey. And unfortunately, Rosano dropped it. So a big play averted there is excellent pass there by Will Howard. And they're going to have to punt. And it's not as though Rosano had a ton of space between him and the man who was covering him. But it was a perfect throw. It was right there. And now the ever dangerous to Bryant back to return the punt. He has punt return, kick returns, and interception returns this year. He's going to have the chance to return it here. Makes one man miss. He's got some room on the sideline. Cuts it back to the middle of the field. He's still not down, Carl. He's finally tripped up in Downingtown West Territory. Carl just kicked the ball out of bounds. Yeah, they got to do something. He's too, he's too dangerous in space, Mikey. Did you see the way he got rid of the first guy? That was ridiculous. And, you know, he had all kinds of moves and really would have gone for a touchdown, but he got tripped up. And couldn't hold on. But the meanwhile, they have the ball at Downingtown West 35, threatening to score again, Mikey. Yeah, expect Coach will still keep in the hurry up offense. As you said, they want to tire out this Whippet defense. Now, the uh, Downingtown West offense, they had a first down on that drive. The defense got a little bit of a breather, but as this game goes on, they cannot allow their defense to keep being out on the field. Ortega takes himself, he breaks a tackle. He's still looking for a receiver. Ortega smartly throws the ball in the ground. He had a receiver in the area in DeMonte Reason. Yeah, excellent defense there, Mikey, by D. West. And uh, Ricky, all he could do is use his athleticism to get uh, rid of the ball and for, you know, make sure he didn't lose any yardage on that play. But just as we saw in the big pass play on their first drive, as he was running, he was still looking for someone to throw the ball to, but he had his receiver he was looking towards was still blocking because he thought it was a run. 7 and nothing is your score. 9-18 left to go in the first quarter. We are live at Kottmeyer Stadium in Downingtown, Pennsylvania as the Red Raiders look to add to their lead. Ortega pressured again. Carl, he's so good at avoiding tackles as he's just gotten himself, got to see the spot. That's Did they give him a down. first down, Carl? That's a first down, Mikey. Great, great run by Ricky Ortega. And we I talked about that, that we're going to need Ricky in the run game, and he just showed you that he's healthy, Mikey, and that's bad news for the Whippets. I was reading an article coming up to this game. They said Ortega's feeling the healthiest he's felt in several weeks. As you said, that's bad news for the Whippets because if you try have to worry about him running the ball, that's one last person that you could worry about covering Dupree Bryant. And they're giving Bryant about a 12-yard cushion right now. Could hit him on a short pass and just make him make some moves with his feet. Ortega takes himself. This time he's brought down by Sean Pelkinson and... Brad Pezek. Yeah, Brad Pezek was on in, in there with Pelkinson, Mikey, and, and uh, excellent defensive play. But as you know, Coatesville doesn't get uh, 
um, upset when they don't get a, a big game. They come right back at you. That pass is dropped. But we've seen in Ricky Ortega and Dupree Bryant's careers, a third and 12 is like a third and two for these guys, Carl. Right. Downingtown West, they need to make sure if it's a short pass, they wrap up and they make the tackle. They cannot let Dupree Bryant get behind the defense. And then also have to be mindful of Ortega running. Artie Burgess is the one that dropped that ball, Mikey, as he tried to run with it before he caught it. Third and 12. Shotgun formation. Ortega drops back. He's getting pressure by Pelkison, but it's going to be a completed pass, and it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one play and making the stiff arm and getting... Close to the first down is Artie Burgess, but Carl, I believe he is going to be about a yard and a half short. And Coatesville, I have to feel, is going to go for it, Carl. Yeah, they'll definitely go for it here, Mikey. Uh, again, a, a great play by Ortega, getting it out to Burgess, who makes up for that drop and gets him almost a first down. And that is a big difference between Howard and Ortega. Howard can run and get some, some solid gains, but Ortega can run to extend plays. He can run to get big plays. He's a little bit more elusive. Fourth and two. Ortega's taking it himself. And if he's going to be trying to fight for it for the first time. He's going to be stopped, Carl. Big no play. gain on the play. Big play, Mikey, by Downingtown West. That's a play that Ricky Ortega, 95% of the time, gets the first down. But Downingtown West has been tough in the middle of the line tonight. That's one area where they've been real strong. Yeah, Carl, he tried to break a tackle as he's done several times already this evening, but he was unsuccessful. Great job by the Whippet defense. SWI, or Service Wholesale Incorporated, is your place to go for building materials and products. They supply quality materials for the building, construction, remodeling, and lumber industries. Their motto is service with integrity. Visit them at 4810 Horseshoe Pike in Downingtown or give them a call at 610-518-5187. That's SWI, or Service with Service Wholesale Incorporated. We had a run play there. Mikey gets about three yards. That's Lewis on the carry. He went right in the middle of the line. Carl, looking at the all-time series for Whippets versus Red Raiders, they started playing in 1913 when it was Coatesville versus just Downingtown, uh, when there was one Downingtown. So between 1913 and 2002, Coatesville won 54, Downingtown 40. There were six ties. Once the uh, West became two schools, we'll finish after this play, and it's Lewis Trying to do his best to pre Bryant, which is making something work with not a lot of space. And a flag just came down at the end of the play there, Mikey. We'll see what that is. As we wait on the flag, since Downingtown's put into two schools, Coatesville's won 10, Downingtown West has won 7. So if you do the name of Red Raiders versus the Whippets at all time, it is Red Raiders 64, Whippets 47. It's going to be a personal foul against Coatesville. It's going to be a Whippet first down. I didn't see the infraction there, Mike. Yeah, I don't believe you did either, but uh, it's, a big, it's a big penalty against Coatesville there. Yeah, Carl, it was really uh, crowded there in the middle of the field when Lewis was trying to make a big play, but uh, clearly the refs were able to see an infraction of some sort. It's big for Downingtown West. Coatesville could have had the Whippets in the third down. Nice job there by the Red Raider defense. In on the tackle, Frank Johnson. There was two other Red Raiders there, but I believe Johnson made the primary hit. Yeah, Derek Seagreese got there first, Mikey, and slowed him down. Both defenses are swarming. I think we are. We got ourselves making a hell of a football game going here. Pickup of one, second and nine. The Whippets have made some big plays this year, but I don't think they've played an offense this fast before. Excuse me, defense this fast before. They have a wide open receiver that is Julian Williams. He's going up the sideline inside the 10. Going to be pushed out right around the five yard line, Carl. He was wide open. Wide open. Artie Berger saved the touchdown, Mikey. Carl Howard let the play develop. 
He waited to see where the defense was going and found that he had a wide open man. If you're a Downingtown West fan, you know you have to get touchdowns in this game, not field goals. Absolutely. And obviously a missed assignment on that play. As we talked about Julian Williams and his big playability. Handoff goes to Lewis, and he is met in the oh. backfield, but he breaks the tackle, Carl. He's going to be tackled at the two. What a job by Lewis. I don't know. How. I thought it was going to be tackled for a loss. This is the most Coatesville team Downingtown has had in years. They have multiple playmakers. They have guys that can break tackles. And they have a quarterback who can throw the football. Don't forget that Rosanna, this game should be tied. Second goal, ball on the two. Do they give it to Lewis again? Instead, it goes to the up man, and that is Max Hale with the touchdown. And the Whippets are an extra point away from tying this game. Great drive there, Mikey. 83 yards, the big play to Julian Williams. And a big 15-yard penalty on personal foul also set up that drive. I want to give a shout-out to one of our viewers, uh, Jason, for pointing out that the defensive player shoved the runner's face into the ground after making the tackle. All so right. unnecessary. Extra point is up, and it is good. The Whippets have tied the game at 7-7 to -7 with 5.42 left to go in the first quarter. It's the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. We'll be back after this word from Chester County Transmissions. Hi, this is Andy of Chester County Transmissions. We're a full-service automotive shop here in Coastal Pennsylvania that also specializes in transmission and driveline repair. Just so you know, for all your automotive needs, we're here to take care of you. State inspections, whatever you need. Our number here is 610-384-2879. Good morning, Chester County Transmissions. Rich speaking. How can I help you? Please stop in, give us a call. God bless. We are back live at Kottmeyer Stadium as the Downtown West Whippets have just tied the Coatesville Red Raiders at 7. It was a drive that had a big pass play to Joyan Williams where it was brought home by Max Hale. And Carl, Hale's a guy that can get you some tough yardage. Yeah, he is, Mickey. Another excellent football player for Downingtown West. He's really... Um, been a big asset for them this season. He had a touchdown run against Westchester East last week in the Whippets 50 to 27 win. Carl, this is another game like the Downingtown East game where I just love the atmosphere. Both bleachers are filled and that is what the Whippets need to do if you're a West fan. Kick the ball in the end zone and not give Dupree Bryant a chance to return it. But both Bleachers are filled. You have players standing around the fence on the outside. They were letting people into the game, Carl, at 5.30, which is a half hour earlier, I believe, than normal. I want to give a shout-out to Leone's Pizza in Downingtown for providing the ChessmontFootball.com crew with the delicious meal tonight. They're located at 102 Wallace Avenue in Downingtown, next door to the Kerr Park Wawa, and have amazing pizzas, strabolli sandwiches, pasta dishes, and more. You can call this Downingtown Institution at 610-873-2500 or order online at leonespizzadowningtown.com. Whippet jumped a little bit there. They're lucky they got back. First and 10, ball on the 20. Only five seconds left on the play clock, Carl. Two, one, Ortega gets it off just in time. That's going to be Demetrius McLean Jackson on the run. And Carl, let's see if we can get that touchdown run by the Whippets in real quick. It is the hurry up offense by the Red Raiders, but luckily it's a two yard run. As there was a Red Raider there to try and trip up Hale, but it looks like Howard made the right decision in giving it to him. Don't know if that was his choice or designed. Second and eight, ball in the 22. Ortega completes the pass. That is, I believe, Abdul Stewart on the reception. It is. Yeah, Abdul's had two big plays tonight. He had that big play down the sideline that led to the touchdown. It's turning into a factor tonight. And he is a junior, Carl. Perhaps he will be the replacement for Dupree Bryant. I know you can't replace a Dupree Bryant, but perhaps next season he'll be the primary target. As Artie Burgess is a senior, just like Dupree, so they're losing 
uh, two of their top receivers and their quarterback. Ortega takes it himself. And he's going to be stopped after just a one-yard gain. In my four years of watching Ricky, I've never seen anybody uh, do as good a job as D. West has uh, so far on him tonight. He had Will, one nice run, but they've done a good job on him. Will Mahmoud and Bo Bryant on the tackle. Second and nine. He has, however, used that short passing game to uh, perfection so far tonight. And that's where they've gotten most of their big plays. Tega rolls out. Pass is complete to Abdul Stewart again. Beautiful execution on that play, Mikey. They're going to spot him at the 45, one yard shy of a first down. Alex Rosano was the one who drove him out of bounds. It's one of the things Ricky can do that uh, not many quarterbacks in Chessmont can do, Mikey, which is that being able to throw the ball on the run. He does an excellent job of being able to do that. And Ricky is listed at six foot. He's not as tall as Howard, but when you have the ability to run, that gets the pressure out of your face a little bit. You're not worrying about passes getting deflected as much because you're running away from those hands. Ortega takes himself. He dives forward for the first down. That's what he was looking to do on the fourth down on their last drive. Yeah, a little hesitation on that play. that opened it up a little bit for him to get through for a big first down. First and 10, ball on the 47. Now, Coach Roll is not huddling, but they are taking some time between plays. That pass was thrown high and a little bit wide. A little bit of a miscommunication there, it looked like, Carl. Yeah, the ball sailed on uh, Ricky a little bit there. Folks, coming up next week, it's these Coachville Red Raiders in this very stadium again, taking on the Downingtown East Cougars. And like the businesses you've heard tonight, you too can advertise on the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com by calling 610-269-5000 for sponsorship opportunities. Just a reminder, this game is going to be archived on ChessmontFootball.com if you've missed any of this game. Ortega's pass is thrown. It is incomplete. Tough play to make. Dupree Bryant Carl, if anybody can make a catch, it would be him. He did have a drop last week against Bishop Shanahan, but if I want uh, anybody trying to make that play in Chessmont, it's going to be Dupree Bryant. Yeah, Dante West doing an excellent job of pressuring uh, Ricky. He did get the pull out to Dupree, but he wasn't able to hold on. Now, can they get the stop on this third and long? Because if it's a fourth and short, that means that Coatesville will be on the west side of the field. Don't be surprised if they go for it. Look out for Ortega's running ability, or does he just do a short pass to let a playmaker do something? And he's going to be taken down in the backfield. Huge sack by Marcus Gaynor, Carl. A great play by Marcus Gaynor as he corralled Ricky Ortega, would not let him go. And D. West comes up with another big stop, their second big stop of the night. And they'll have to punt the football here, Mikey, with a fourth and 22. Dupree Bryant's going to punt it. Fourth and 22. 242 left to go in the first quarter. That is a strong punt, Carl. But it's going to go to Julian Williams, the whippet return man. There is a flag on the play. So it probably might be coming back. That line drive punt allowed Julian to return the football. But it's in the backfield of West, so it usually means holding. And it is. Holding on Downingtown West. And that's going to bring him back. Carl, when you're going up against a team like Coatesville, you cannot make any mistakes. You're about to have good field position after your defense got a stop. Now you're going to be backed up at your own. It's the nose of the ball is touching the 25, but you could have been up past your own 40. That is correct. They did it. They did go 83 yards the last time, so they are 
they do have the capability of long drives. First and 10, ball on the 25. Seven to seven is your score. It's a toss play to Lewis. He's got a hole. He's going to be tackled at the 34-yard line. Pickup of nine. Did a nice job following his blockers there. Absolutely, Mikey. Great blocking, great execution on that play. Did they look to try and get a big play here, knowing that they have to just gain one yard on third down? Did they know, hey, let's just get first downs? He's not going to get a first down. <laughs> they on that try one. for the first down and they gain inches. We gave credit to the offensive line on the first down play. All the credit to the defensive line on that play. Do they try and do a quarterback sneak with their six foot four quarterback? Yeah, it's a good long yard here, so we'll see. Howard actually drops back. He's rolling out. Oh, and he slides. Carl, He's he had a man open, but he decided to slide. He had, I believe that was Julian Williams running near the sideline. Yeah, that play unfortunately blew up in his face there, Mikey. The Coatesville defense did exactly what they needed to. Their offense had to punt, something you don't see them do very often. The Whippets needed one yard. They had two plays, and they couldn't do it. I don't know if Howard just did not see his open receiver or if he was afraid of it being deflected in some way, but, Carl, they had a chance there to get that first down. You do kick it away from Brian out of bounds, which is a smart play. Yeah, the ball is going to be spotted at the 30-yard line, and that is where Coatesville is going to take over after this word about Stephen C. Brown. That's right, Stephen C. Brown covers a thing or two because he's seen a thing or two. He is your local farmer's insurance agent. He is located in Downingtown looking for home insurance, auto insurance, or something else. Give him a call at 610-590-4181 or contact him at sbrown2 at farmersinsurance.com. They are farmers. Dun, 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 dun. First and 10, ball on the 30. Carl, the whip of defense has been thinking, we've just stopped them twice in a row. Now you're expecting us to do it again? And Ricky Ortega gets a good first down run. Yeah, I don't think he got the first down because of Marcus Gaynor there, Mike. Yeah, Gaynor making the big play, but yeah. that's a solid pickup. Eight yards on a first down play. Yeah, that's uh, that's the Ricky Ortega I know, Mikey, who, who breaks that initial tackle, and it, it uh, always gives him a big gain after that. This could be the final play of the first quarter. A quarter that has seen both teams score, but also the defense come up with some big stops. I don't know if they're going to run a play, Carl. They do. Pass is complete to Bryant. And he's got room to the outside. He cuts back. He's still going. He's finally inside of Whippet territory down at the 37-yard line. So dangerous, Mikey Dupree Bryant. Once he gets his hands on that football, he's got all kinds of moves. We said the Whippets need to wrap up and make tackles. They were able to make one, but after a big game for the Red Raiders, that's going to do it for the first quarter. It is the home Downingtown West Whippets, the visiting Coatesville Red Raiders, tied at 7-7. Seven seven. We'll be back after this word from Beaver Creek Tavern. Whether looking for the best burgers in Chester County, a place to host your private event, or a relaxing place to enjoy daily food and drink specials, Beaver Creek Tavern has you covered. Serving classic American fare with gluten-free and vegetarian options available. To get the party started, go to 1350 Bondsville Road in Downingtown or call 484-593-0481. We'll see you there. A proud Coachville alumnus, Brian Maloney is your hometown realtor with Vanguard Realty Alliance. Just like your Red Raiders, Brian outworks the competition and takes his clients across the goal line. Give Brian a call at 484-678-0113 if you're looking to sell, buy, or invest in real estate. That's Brian Maloney with Vanguard Realty Alliance.
Coachville as a first in town on the Downingtown West 37. And Bryant has it hit off the hands. So we Ortega has it off the hands of Dupree Bryant. And there's a flag, Carl. I want to say that they hit Ortega late. And it is a personal foul against Downingtown West. There was pressure, which is why I think that ball was thrown a little bit harder than you're used to. Uh, Ortega had it hit off Bryant's hands, but they're going to get a first down just the same, I do believe. Yeah, it's a tough break for them as they they got fortunately had uh, Dupree Bryant uh, dropping a ball. And, uh, but it's, it's going to result in a uh, first down for Coatesville at the 22-yard line. We've said it. You cannot make mistakes against this team. Your defense got stopped on back-to-back -back drives. You couldn't convert on a second or third and one, so you give the ball back. And then you're committing a personal foul on a play that was an incomplete pass. I do you believe we're going to have a timeout called, Carl? Looks like some confusion there as Ricky... Uh well, the Red Raiders take a timeout, we're going to take a timeout to hear about the Coatesville Christmas Parade. Chester County's largest hometown Christmas Parade is coming to town on Saturday, December 7th. The Coatesville Christmas Parade marches down Lincoln Highway starting at 10 a.m. Come see Philly String Bands, the Eagles Pep Band, and new this year, Riley's Raiders and the 76ers Sixters. There will be fire trucks, antique cars, floats, community groups, and costume characters. And of course, Santa Claus himself will be there. To register to march or for more information, go to CoachvilleChristmasParade.com. We are back live at Kottmeyer Stadium as the Red Raiders have just taken their second timeout of the first half. Carl, this is a situation where less the Red Raiders have uh, a long fourth down. I think they're in four-down territory. Absolutely, Mikey. And, and by I, long, I'm talking fourth and 15, fourth and I, 20. I, I agree. This is all or nothing. Gangs, it looks like some confusion here, Mike, even after the timeout. Yeah, they had a player run on the field late. Ortega, Ricky Ortega noticed it. And they get it in Brian's hands. They're able to push him out of bounds. Carl, I I've said it numerous times in the games where we've called Coatesville. Dupree Bryant and when he was there, uh, Aaron Young, are two of the best players I've seen for to staying in bounds when they're really close to the sideline. So you have to push him hard. He has phenomenal balance. That was a, actually a pretty good defensive play there by West to hold them the three yards. Second and seven ball on the 19. McLean Jackson in the backfield with Ortega. He takes the pitch. And he's going to be play. tripped up by... Sean Pelkinson, Carl. Pelkinson's having a great game, Mikey, on defense. He has been all over the place. He had a big game against Downingtown East. Now, Carl, uh, this is a player who is playing with a heavy heart. His uh, younger sister, unfortunately, passed away uh, the weekend of uh, the Battle of the Brandywine game. So our, our thoughts are with him and his family. But uh, there was a great article about he and uh, Tyreek Lewis and the bond they have as teammates uh, and friends. So... I believe he's playing with a little bit extra tonight, and he, he's showing it. I think he could make a good linebacker in college, Mikey. But he's going to Georgia Southern. Ortega drops back. He's pressured, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield by Max Hale, Carl. We said if it was a fourth and long, we didn't know if they'd go for it. <laughs> but now, Carl, they might have to because this is too long for a field goal and too close for a punt, so they might have to go for this. But it's fourth and 19. Yeah, great play by Max Hale. And both defenses are coming up big here in the second quarter, Mikey. I mean, Coatesville is the second-ranked defense in Chessmont. Downingtown West is the top-ranked offense, but they've had some good defensive games. They've just been blowing teams out. And Coatesville is going to go for it, Carl. Or yeah. do they do a quick pooch punt? Yeah, they could do that, too. I, I tell you, I don't think Ricky's used to having to go up against such a Great defense, except for maybe in the playoffs. In the West student section, 
uh, who has some fans affectionately known as the Melon Heads, who are fans that wear watermelons on their heads as helmets, are making some noise. It's a delay of game against Coachville Carl. I think they were giving themselves some extra room to punt. I think you're right, Mike. When have we seen Coatesville in a regular season game punt twice in a game, let alone in the first half? Really, and to have the ball down you know, at their 22-yard uh, line, Mikey, and now they're at the... They're 30 at the 36 at D West, forced to punt the ball. That punt is going to be caught and returned by Williams, but he is hit hard. A big tackle by Frank Johnson. Frank Johnson, but I'll tell you what, that was dangerous because. With that running ability of Julian Williams, if he could have broken a tackle there, you might have Dupree Bryant having to chase him down for a touchdown. But it's not bad field position considering that they get the ball at their own 23 when Coatesville had the ball at their at 22. So uh, Downingtown West made that really well on that uh, transaction. First and 10, ball on the 23, 10.07 left to go in the second quarter. 7-7 seven to seven is the score. Howard drops back. Pass is complete to Williams with Carl Dupree Bryant. What can't he do? Tremendous coverage and a great catch by Tariq Lewis. Two great athletes, Mikey, going up against each other. I believe that was Williams on the reception. I'm sorry, not, I'm sorry. It was Julian Williams. Another great athlete. Hand off to Hale. Carl, they give it to the up man again. He's got enough for the first down. He's going to be st forward progress stopped at the 36. Don't surpri be surprised to see Downingtown try and do uh, a couple of uh, shorter plays that they hope to have be big plays, uh, but try and give their defense a breather. They know that they have more than answered the call tonight. As Hale catches the pass, going to be pushed out of bounds at the 45, but this Whippet defense, Carl, we didn't know what they'd be able to do against Ortega and Bryant. The Coachville defense, we were expecting them to come in and play as strongly as they have. Second and one, can the Whippets actually convert a one yard first down this time? And they don't. The game may be uh, they gave it an to inch. Alex Rosano, but uh, there was no opening there. Carl, how many times have our viewers heard me say, you need one yard, you should have confidence in your line, do a quarterback sneak. They didn't do it on second and one on the last drive. They didn't do it on third and one. They just had another second and one. It is third and one again. Coachful almost jumped. They do not do the quarterback sneak, and but they do have the first down. Is That's Tyreek Lewis. Well, if you're not going to quarterback sneak, Mikey, that's the guy to give the football to. He, he'll he get you the first down most of the time. Whippets with the hurry-up offense. Ball on the 47. Howard drops back. Pass is incomplete. That's a tough throw to make, Carl, because the coverage was there. He put it where only his man can get it. And I have to think it had to be designed to hail because Lewis was not covered out there, Carl. Yeah, let's give a, a shout-out to Frank Johnson tonight. Mike Keaton's playing tremendous on defense. I believe He's also he, made some offensive plays, I believe too. he had that one penalty, but, again, it was not a foolish penalty. It was a, hey, I'm going to be aggressive defensively and want to get to the quarterback penalty. Right. But that was a great coverage. Actually, a very good throw there by Will Howard. Yeah, and incompletion does not mean it's a bad throw sometimes. Howard keeps it, passes. That time, Carl, was not a good throw. It was thrown behind Williams, and the coverage was right there again. Yeah, good coverage, and the pass was not there. Um, so that sets up a third and long. And another big play here for both teams. I wouldn't be surprised at some tonight, Carl, if we see a, a trick play by the Whippets. Now, we've not seen other games this year, but in the years past, we've seen Coach Milano and his – offense uh, come up with some very unique trick plays. Is this the time where they do that? They don't want to have their defense come back on the field. But with the great speed of Coatesville, it's going to be tough to fool them. Pass is complete. It's not going to be enough for a first down. As that goes to Williams, it's going to be a yard short 
Carl, I think they're going to be aggressive and go for it. Yeah, they'll definitely go for it here, Mikey. That that play was designed to get get them like nine yards. I now do they go for a hard count, try and draw them off sides, call a timeout, and then if they still have the chance to go for it, but they have three timeouts left. Another, Coach, big, another Co big play, Mike. Coastal has been aggressive and has almost jumped. They are going for it. It is Hale, Ooh. and he I He did move forward, Mikey. The official on the Downingtown side of the field, I believe he has it spotted as a first down. The official on the Coatesville side, Carl, he had it spotted a little bit shorter. I think he's got enough. Are they going to call a measurement? We don't see too many of them, Mikey. And they are because you see uh, the chain gang coming in. Carl, I think he got enough for it. I don't know if the spot gave him enough for it, but... Yeah, I agree. The spot wasn't great for them. It's going to be on the... It's going to be close. The forward momentum he had there, I thought he had enough, but the spot is the determining factor. Boy, it is close. Both teams pointing one way. The ref wow. is still staring at it, and oh. it is whipping first down. Oh, and, Carl, you that. see some Red Raider <laughs> players are unhappy... Shamar, Shamar Hall Halls. jumping up and down. He is incensed. Well, yeah, you know, that just shows you how important this game is. remember yeah. seeing a game once in the NFL where an official broke out an index card to see if he can get it between the ball oh, yeah. and the the chain. Yeah, I remember, uh, I remember. I don't remember the game, but I do remember them doing that. Carl, I don't know if that was a should have been a first down based on the spot, but I think it should have been a first down based on the actual run. Right, right. The fact they took that long to look was very interesting, and that yeah. is a big play. It was a big play. First and 10 ball on the Red Raider 43. The Whippets keep their drive alive. Howard drops back. And there's, Carl, that has to be a flag, and the ref does throw that. As to Pre Bryant, I don't know why he's frustrated, Carl, because he was holding on. You could see the jersey being pulled back. Maybe he's upset because he didn't get caught for it thus far tonight, but he was flirting with the penalty all night, Carl. Well, when you have the confidence that he does, you know, he, I'm sure he doesn't think anything's a penalty on him. But it is a penalty, and it's a big play for Downingtown West. Now, they get him for pass interference or holding. They get him for holding, which I think is the correct call. Is that just a five-yard penalty? That is correct, Carl. The refs seem to be a little confused with the chain gang. <laughs> the one member of the chain gang walked up to the 27, then walked back again. Pass is complete to Lewis. Ball oh, comes football. out. Was he down, Carl? I believe I the Red Raiders have recovered it. I believe they have, Mikey. I don't think he was down. And, Carl, fumbles have been an issue for this Tariq. season for the Whippets and for Lewis. He had a big fumble in the Battle of the Brandywine. They have yet to point, Carl. I do believe it is coachful football. Yeah, it's coachful football. Derek Seagrays uh, comes up with the football, Mikey, for number 44. Carl, he was open. He had a first down, but he did not secure the ball, and the head official has finally pointed that it is Coatesville football. Well, Carl, one of the keys to the game, hold on to the ball. The Whippets had a good drive going. And we'll take a look uh, at the replay after this Coatesville play, but the Whippet defense is going to have to come up with another big stop as the Red Raiders have just forced a turnover. Pass is complete to Bryant. As the Whippets try to get a strip, he's still not down, Carl. He's finally, finally pushed out of bounds, not even tackled. What a momentum shifter to have. The Whippets get a big fourth down. They continue their drive. They have a potential big play. And there's a scuffle on the far side of the field on the Coatesville sideline, Carl. Yeah, I'll tell you, Mikey, that, that was a heck of a run by Dupree Bryant there as he was not willing to go down. I just think he got really worked up on that uh, holding call. We and, said, uh, you know, and just said, I'm, I'm going all the way on this play. We he said there's going to be there's going to be some interesting uh, times when there is a visiting player on the opponent's 
uh, an opposing player on the other team's sideline. Pick up a 19 there by uh, Dupree. Again, we will take a look at the fumble after this next play as we did have the skirmish on the far sideline. First and 10, ball on the 44. Pass is complete for another Red Raider first down. Carl, let's take a look at how the Red Raiders got the ball on the fumble by Lewis. And you had Lewis wide open. And yeah, the ball just came out, Carl. That was a good job by our cameraman as the angle we had, we're on the other side uh, from where that was. So we couldn't just see the ball pop out. It's turning into the, the pre Bryant show here, Mikey. Something Coach Will Games have done a lot over the years. As that ball was thrown, Carl, he was anticipating uh, his man, uh, Abdul Stork, getting open. He wanted the flag, but, Carl, that ball was just overthrown. Yeah, it was, Mikey. But uh, what they did is they, 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 he went short and then, you know, faked to go long. But, you know, Marcus Gaynor is having a heck of a football game tonight, and he stayed right with him. Nice job there by the whip at defense again, Carl. Beautiful play. That that was Will Muhammad who knocked it down. Will Mahoud, sorry. Will Mahoud, Mahoud, and he makes a great play there by sticking his hand out and blocking the ball. And now we got third and ten, Mikey. No guarantees that, any, that Coatesville's going to get in here. The downtown West defense has been terrific tonight, and so has Coatesville's. Tega has got time, but now he's pressured by Pelkinson. Ball is thrown up, and Carl Bryant gets behind the defense. I don't know what the defensive back was doing. I think he thought that ball was underthrown, so he stepped up. He had perfect coverage. That is a blown play by the Whippet defense. That's a, absolutely Mike, right, Mikey. That's exactly what happened on that play. As Ricky Ortega just threw a perfect pass, the defensive back thought the ball was going short. However, it landed right into Pre Bryant's hand. And we're down at the one yard line, first and goal. Big play there for Coatesville. Carl, I know you want to try and make a big defensive play, but you've got to stay with your man. And Ortega is in. It's going to be a Red Raider touchdown. Ortega's second of the night. What a swing in momentum. Do we have a replay on that great, great catch by Bryant? Well, Carl, we do, but we will take a look at that after this extra point, after we hear uh, from one of our fantastic sponsors on the Chessmont game that we call chessmontfootball.com. Extra point is up, and it is no good. That could come into play later in the game, Carl, as your score is Coatesville 13, Downingtown West 7. We'll be back after this word from Miller's Insurance. Chester County's most trusted insurance agency. Whether it's for your automobile or your home, a life insurance policy or coverage for your business. Since 1975, Miller's Insurance Agency has been protecting homes, property, people, and businesses throughout Chester County. Miller's guides you every step of the way, providing the best options, getting you the right policy that works best for you. Contact us today for a no-cost consultation. Miller's Insurance Agency. We're here today for your tomorrows. Visit online at miainc.com. We are back live at Kottmeyer Stadium as the Coachville Red Raiders have just gotten a touchdown and a drive that was due to a Whippet fumble on a drive where the Dantoros Whippets were looking to take their first lead of the game. And Carl, the Whippets had some chances to get off the field there, but they gave up a big play when they had good coverage. They did, and you know, Deep, Dupree Bryant was obviously possessed on that series, Mikey, and I, th I think he almost willed himself to, to a touchdown there as he makes a big play, a couple of great big plays on that drive. As 
Coachville wants to try and keep it away from Williams, but he will have a chance on the return. But it's a big tackle by Coachville trying to get the number. I believe that was number it's 51. 51, Mikey. Uh, Nolan O'Hara. Big play by him. But let's take a look at the Red Raiders. Two big plays from that last drive. The pass completion to Bryant and the touchdown run by Ortega. First and 10 ball in the 22. Lewis takes the handoff. He's trying to use his speed to get to the outside, but he is playing a speedy Coachville defense. Yes. And let's see some of the speed on that big pass play to Bryant. So Ortega got pressure by Pelkins and he just threw it up. And you had Gaynor who was just kind of staring at the ball while it was in the air while Bryant was keeping an eye on it. And then Ortega doing what he does best, getting his team tough yardage and a touchdown. Second and eight ball on the 24. The Whippet defense is hoping that their offense can not only get them a good drive, but some points, a well-defended play. You had... Luke Buchanan, Mikey. Buchanan on the deflection. Buchanan on that play. Yeah, Lop was uh, on the field, but he was not the person who made that play. That as you heard the, yeah, we, for those of you who heard the PA announcer saying uh, Lop on that play. Want to give a shout out to Wegmans, a proud supporter of Chessmont Football and ChessmontFootball.com. They're hiring. You can apply online at Wegmans.com slash careers. Danny Town needs a big play here, Mikey. Tega, I mean, excuse me, Howard drops back. Pass is incomplete. It was intended for Williams. Carl, there is a flag from the far side of the field, and I want to know if that ref was maybe looking not where the ball was thrown because he was closer to a different wide receiver. I'm going to be curious to see what that call is because where the ball was thrown didn't look like there was anything done incorrectly by the defense. That's, that's absolutely correct. Oh, it's a sideline warning, Carl. Oh, it's a, no penalty, just a sideline warning, and you throw the flag on that? Yes, you get one warning, but the second time that happens, it will be a, a yardage penalty. That makes a lot more sense. It, it does. There was no penalty on that play. So, But the Whippets are now in danger of possibly falling behind by two scores because they're going to need to try and kick it out of bounds again to not allow uh, to pre Bryant a chance to get a big return. But this is not the Whippet offense we have been seeing all season. Well, yeah, one of the things is when you can't run the football, Mikey, it makes it harder in the passing game. Although they've not tried uh, as much on uh, some of their speedy run plays and trick run plays. It's been more of kind of a option plays. And that takes a whip it bounce, but Bryant with the chance to return it now. They got him. And there is a nice tackle on the play by Terrence Gaynor. But there is a flag on the play again, and it's in the area where there's a flag on Downingtown West. And I see a whippet player kind of staring at the ref, put his hands out, and then I saw that official shaking his head like, yep. It's a personal foul against the whippets, Carl. They're shooting themselves in the foot right now. Yeah, so that will come after the play, Mikey, and give them 15 more yards. Uh, I do believe that yep. will be the case. Yep. As you had a nice tackle on Dupree Bryant, but you're going to give the Raid Raiders the yardage as though he had a big return. Right. Uh, on, the, on that play, Dupree actually, because the play took so long to develop because of the ball bouncing, it allowed the Downingtown West to get down the field, Mikey, and, and get them uh, some plays. First and 10, ball on the 49. The Whippet defense needs another stop. They've gotten more tonight than I think Coatesville was anticipating. But this Red Raider offense keeps on churning. 
Pass is complete. Another broken tackle. Lewis on the tackle. But it's a solid first down uh, play for DeMonte Reason. He's going to pick up, looks like, six. Seven, actually. Shotgun formation, no backs in the backfield with Ortega. And Carl, you only need three. The defense gives you a five, six yard cushion. What do you do? You take it. Yeah, yeah. you get the first down. That's something I think the Whippets might need to do more of as they're trying to hit some, some bigger pass plays to receivers who are covered. Just take the yardage you can get, put together a long drive. First and 10, ball in the 36, 4 36 left to go in the second quarter. Ortega takes it himself, goes to the outside. He delivers a hit to a defender as he before he runs out of bounds. Sardella Eye Associates has been providing the very best in eye care to families in Chester County for over 20 years. Sardella Eye Associates provide comprehensive eye exams, treatment, and the management of eye disorders. They also take care of dry eye therapy, eyeglasses, contact lenses, and more. You can go see them at their conveniently located offices at 1810 East Lincoln Highway in Coatesville. As it's a first down play for Coatesville. Wow. Abdul Stort, Mikey, just would not go down. They, they might not be the biggest of players, but they are very strong. Carl, just want to finish talking, telling about our friends at Sardella Eye Associates. You can give them a call at 610 Sardella Eye Associates. First and 10, ball on the 17. Complete. Going for Abdul Stewart again, Mikey. Yeah, the, the coverage, the defensive back was just putting his hands up. He was facing the opposite direction. Big series in this game, Mikey. If Cutsville can get up two scores, yeah, it'll Carl, make it tough. Carl, on that Downingtown West drive that ended with the fumble, there was two plays that I thought could be momentum shifting plays. It was the fourth down conversion by the Whippets, but then Coatesville get the got the momentum back because of the fumble. The Whippet defense got some stops, but they need another one as they do not want to fall down by two possessions. Ortega finds a wide open to Pre Bryant, no way. and he <laughs> cuts back and gets the touchdown, 17-yard touchdown reception. There's no way they were going to tackle him on that play, Mikey. Just with his ability, it was a short touchdown. To Pre Bryant taking over the game here for Coatesville. That's what great players do, Mikey. to seven with 349 left to go in the first half. It's the Chessmont game of the week on chessmontfootball.com. Football.com and wants everyone to enjoy the rest of the new in Coatesville and serves delicious food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Whether it's classic breakfast staples, homemade soups, tasty sandwiches, or blue plate specials, you can count on Little Chef to always leave you satisfied. And guess what? They can cater your event as well. Order online at littleshep.us or give them a call at 610-384-3221. Folks, also, are you interested in the market for a new home or have a house to sell? Contact Kim Moralia, real estate with Kim Passion. As a lifelong resident of the area, her expertise is focused in Chester, Montgomery, and Delaware counties. For 15 years, Kim's passion for helping her clients reach their goals always shines through whether you are buying or selling your home. Kim is an award-winning realtor with Cobalt Bank of Preferred and Exton. Check out our website at kimsellsthesuburbs.com or give her a call at 484-368-9450. Carl, the Whippets have 349 left, three timeouts, and they get the ball to start the second half. So if they can put a touchdown on the board here, they still have the opportunity to take the lead after one drive. Carl, there's a block in the back against the Whippets. And I think the ball came out again, Carl.
But it is Whippet football. The Coachville players were fired up over there. I thought the, well, they thought the ball came I, out. I, yeah, I mean the tackle was a hard tackle. They're they're really coming to the ball, Mikey. Uh, this is this may be the best game Coachville's played all year. This is certainly, I think, the the toughest opponent they've had at least since that week one matchup against Harrisburg. But that was kind of a sloppy game. We couldn't really tell which team was playing well, which team wasn't. Toss play. No room to run for the Whippets. Gutsville's defense playing with a lot of confidence, Mikey. Don't you agree? Well, uh, Carl, again, this is they're playing a team that they, in the last three years, have given up just 29 points to, just 466 yards. They're a defense that gives up 216 yards a game. They're probably playing their best team, and they're they're playing they're having their best performance tonight. They have a wide open receiver. That's Tyreek Lewis. He's still got room to run, but there's a flag as the ref falls down throwing the flag. Lewis is running up the sideline, but Carl, is that going to be coming back? I didn't see, unless it was maybe some sort of pick play, as you see Will Howard staring at another official going, putting his hands on, what is that? And I saw the ref mouth the words, I don't know, and stick his hands out. Is that big play coming back, Carl? It if so, back. that's going to be another momentum shifting play. He's pointing like he's coming back. As you see him talking, I believe, to Coach Milano. Carl, you play a team like Coachville, you have to limit your mistakes. You, uh, your team is talented as downtown West. I'm not saying you have to play perfect football, but you got to play pretty darn good football. But the Whippets, Carl, are walking as though that play is going to count. I think it's another sideline warning, and it is. So both teams have each gotten a sideline warning. The next time it happens, it will be a penalty. Well, that, there you go. That was the big play that Downingtown West needed, Mikey, to get back in the game. They still need to go in and score. Carl, let's take a look at that replay real quick before the Whippets run their next play. Let's see how Tariq got him. Oh, Lewis broke a tackle. He showed great speed. And Carl, who was it that chased him down? Dupree Bryant pushes him out of bounds. So the Whippets, they need to get in the end zone, but they also don't want to give Coatesville time. And Carl, let's take a look at Dupree Bryant's uh, touchdown. As he just had a great juke back. And Carl, what they were doing there is they were, uh, the ball should have been placed at the hash mark. It was not. So that's the correction the officials made, and it was correct. Handoff taken by Hale. Max Hale carries the football. John Gutman in on the tackle. Game of two. He picked up just two there, Carl. And a, a bit of a surprising score. Downingtown East is currently beating Shanahan, but it's only 21 to 14. That is surprising. And they play these Coatesville Red Raiders next week on the Chessmont game of the week on chessmontfootball.com. Ooh, big hit, Carl. And I'm I'm actually a little surprised in the NFL anymore. That's hitting a defenseless receiver. I kind of like that it's not a flag, but I'm surprised it's not. Abdel Stewart on the, on the on the play there makes the play. I tell you what, I I thought he came maybe a little bit early, but there's no call. Kennett currently leading Great Valley 21 to nothing. They're continuing their strong season. Their only loss was to Westchester East. Henderson currently trails Sun Valley seven to six at halftime. Sun Valley looking to get their first win. Oxford leads Reading nine to seven. I do believe the Whippets timeout. are going to call a timeout, and they do. Coatesville Flower Shop is 70 years old and still going strong. This family-owned business is located at the corner of 3rd Avenue and East Lincoln Highway in Coatesville. Whatever the occasion, you can rely on their years of experience for expert advice and designs. They have been named one of FTD's top 200 floors in the nation for 10 consecutive years. 
With four generations of the DePedro family working there, they're happy to go the extra mile to meet your needs, and they deliver. Call them at 610-384-2677 and mention this ad tomorrow only, coupled with a Red Raider win in tonight's game, and you can buy one dozen roses, get one dozen roses free. Red roses are excluded. That's Coatesville Flower Shop. Carl trying to locate the score of the Westchester East Rustin game. There we go. It is Westchester East 7, Rustin nothing. Now, Westchester East quarterback uh, Ryan Duell got hurt in the matchup against Downtown West last week. That was a big win for the Whippets. Westchester East, their only two losses this season were to the Downingtowns, East and West, as when they played undefeated Kennett, they got the victory. Third and eight, big third down for the Whippets and for the Red Raiders. Howard pressured. Pass is thrown up. Is that complete, Carl? They are saying it is. It's going to be a fourth down, but that should have been a sack or an incomplete pass. Carl, I think they're going to go for it. They're going to do a no-huddle offense. Coachville has a player late getting off the field. The Whippets should have snapped it to try and get the uh, offsides. offsides. Lewis, I don't think he's going to get it, Carl. Nope. And he doesn't. Carl Howard's pointing as though he thought they got it with the extra man on the field, but they were too slow to get the snap off. That's something you've got to recognize sooner. I do not like that play call. You've heard me say it before. You need to get one yard. Why have your back starting back that far? You have the half second of what the toss play takes. You have the time for the defense to get through the line of scrimmage. Do not like that play call. They should have gotten the snap off quicker, Carl, to get Coach yeah, in the penalty. It's been a, a game of big plays here, Mikey, and it's unfortunately it's been, uh, for Downingtown West, it's been Coatesville making most of them. And that's going to be a flag on the play, Ortega on the run. And Carl, what an opportunity missed by the Whippets as they had great field position. They used one of their timeouts on that drive. I like them going for it, but if you're going to do it, again, just do the quarterback sneak or just hurry up and get it because you could see that they were doing a substitution. Why would you not snap it sooner to get the penalty? Yeah, I thought that's what they were going to do. And just turned into a, a disaster for Downingtown West. First and 14, ball on the three. There is still a little bit of time for the Whippets to try to uh, get a stop and get the ball back. Nice hit there on Ortega. Downingtown West does call a timeout here, Mikey. Down to one as they're going to try to get the football back. Carl, that gives us another opportunity to tell you about the fourth annual Red Run Challenge. That's right, the Red Run Challenge takes place on December 7th before the famous Coatesville Christmas Parade. Registration is now open, so go to runsignup.com slash rrc4 and register today. Cash awards to the top racers and medals by age group, as well as prizes for the most festive participants. So grab your tutu, your costume, or your holiday bling, and lace up your sneaks, and race for the win. The proceeds from this festive 5K race and walk go 100% to helping young adults in Chester County with their next step in life. We see the potential in all. Come for the race, stay for the parade. Carl went last year, took my uh, daughter to the parade with my wife. And uh, we did see a little bit of the run. There was definitely some people in unique costumes. But it's good fun for a good cause. 
And of course, you know in the parade, I love seeing Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. Ortega takes it himself again. He takes a big hip and then keeps running, Carl. Yeah, he likes, he likes contact, Mikey. One of the few quarterbacks that does like contact. Now the Whippets are letting the clock run now. The Red Raiders will have to run another play. If the Whippets get a stop, then they'll call their timeout, and they'll see if they can get a big return. Had they not called the timeout on that last drive, uh, they would have had three timeouts left. Would have maybe had a little bit more time to do something. Just a couple mistakes by the Whippets in this first half is why they find themselves down by 13. Now they do get the ball to start the second half, so they'll have the opportunity uh, to make it a one possession game if they don't score before the half here, as Coach Vo calls a timeout. Uh, but Carl, that, that fourth down play, your, your thoughts on that play call? Uh, well, obviously it looks like they were trying to rush to the line and get the ball off, and like you said, they, they just didn't, didn't get it off in time. And it uh, allowed Coatesville to blow up the play as they got great penetration on that play. Well, and another thing on a toss play is that you're having to use your speed to get to the outside. You're right. playing a speedy and team. Speedy team with the linebackers and their, and their defensive backs <laughs> and all, all running towards the football. And Howard even was pointing. He thought they got it for there being the extra man on the field. But if, you're, if that's your goal is to do that, you've got to snap it quicker. Well, let's take a look at that, that fourth down play, Carl. as Lewis actually ran into his own man because Coachville was able to penetrate the line so well. Just over 30 seconds left to go in the first half. Coachville has a third and four. If the Whippets can get the stop, they will get the ball back. But with just a minimal amount of time. But Carl, that's going to be a Coachville first down. Do they try and hurry up and call a play real quick. The clock stops for a first down. We'll restart when the chains are moved. But just another thing not going the Whippets way in this half. And they played a very strong defensive game short of a play or two. As I do believe that is going to do it for the first half, Carl, as the Coatesville faithful making some noise. They're very happy as the Coatesville Red Raiders Lead the undefeated downtown West Whippets by a score of 20 to 7 as we are now officially at halftime. It's the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. Folks, Chessmont Game of the Week is brought to you by the Matt Gorham Group. Buying, selling, or renting a home is an important transaction, and who you choose to represent you and your family matters. The Matt Gorham Group has a track record of success, having sold the most homes in the Coatesville area in the past 15 years. We are local experts who grew up here, live here, and serve here. Please call the Matt Gorham Group for your local real estate needs at 610-BALDGUY. Yes, that's 610-BALDGUY. Or visit callthebaldguy.com. The Matt Gorham Group says, go Red Raiders. And the Matt Gorham Group has to be very happy right now, Carl, as the Red Raiders again lead by a score of 20-7. to We'll be back with second half action in just a little bit, so stay tuned.
Welcome back, football fans, of the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. It was the Coatesville Red Raiders pretty much doing everything right in that first half. They lead the Downingtown West Whippets 20-7. to Carl, Downingtown West really got in their own way several times. Their defense played pretty strong. Yeah, they really did, Mikey, and uh, some big plays there by Coatesville um, in the end of the second quarter by Dupree Bryant and Ricky Ortega gave him the lead, but of course, Downingtown West did uh, have an important fumble by Tariq Lewis that cost him a drive and then getting down there and not being able to score. Now, Lewis did have a really big reception, but the Whippets could not capitalize and been a uh, little questioning of some of their short yardage play calls, a uh, second one and a third one that they couldn't convert and they had to punt. They had a fourth and one where there was a chance to get off the uh, the coastal player was trying to get off the field, but they did not snap the ball. And then they caught a toss play. And talking in the press box with other members of the media, we were all surprised with that play call. But let's take a look at some of the plays that made that first half. As we have our first half replays, you have Ricky Ortega scoring on a quarterback sneak, something he's done several times throughout his career. You have Howard handing it off to Hale. Again, I think that type of play call would have been better suited for that fourth down at the end of the half. You have Ortega scoring on his second quarterback sneak touchdown of the evening. You have the big pass play to uh, Bryant where he just does a nice job going, oop, cut back, I'm going to get in there for a score. And that is how we got to this 20-7 to score, Carl. I think that if you are a Downingtown West fan, you have to be saying, we need to score on this opening drive. We need to say we can put points on the board because if they go out there and the Red Raider defense gets a stop, they're going to be saying to themselves, you, you can't do anything to us. You, you cannot score. Yeah, the next score in this game will, will decide it, Mikey. If Coatesville scores, I, I don't think West can come back. Uh, if West scores, I, we could have a game. This ha definitely has to be the fastest defense that downtown West has gone up against, but all, everything I read going into this week, whether it was uh, the Daily Local, it was the writers at PA Prep Live, it was Philly.com, was saying this is the best offense that Coachville has gone up against. But they have been able to make stops in the running game. Tyreek Lewis, eight rushes, just 24 yards. Now, we did have that big reception. Will Howard, just seven of 17 for 163 yards, no touchdowns. Conversely, Ricky Ortega, 244 yards passing. Dupree Bryant, six catches, 110 yards, and a touchdown. And what a difference between uh, the sidelines. You have Coachville, they're jumping up and down, getting fired up for the second half. They're fans, they're players. You have Downtown West, the players just kind of standing there like, um, all right, well, let's, let's hope we can do this. As we await the second half kickoff, we are underway. Backing up inside his own five is Williams. And Carl, he has not been as effective tonight as we have seen him be this season. There's a flag on the play as you had a Coatesville player and a downtown West player getting into it after that play. And if that's against the whippage, that is a foolish penalty as you had Maurice Scott getting into it with Matt Furcon. It is against Coatesville. I saw when that play ended, they were in each other's faces. So something to help out the Whippets as they try to put some points on the board on their first drive of the second half. Folks, want to tell you again about the Matt Gorham Group. Buying, selling, or renting a home is an important transaction, and who you choose to represent you and your family matters. The Matt Gorham Group has a track record of success, having sold the most homes in Coatesville in the Coatesville area in the past 15 years. We are located. We are local experts who grew up here, live here, and serve here. Please call the Matt Gorham Group for your local real estate needs at 610 Bald Guy. Yes, that's 610 Bald Guy, or visit callthebaldguy.com. The Matt Gorham Group says, "Go Red Raiders." As Howard floats it up, yeah, that, that is pass interference, Carl. That was not a well-thrown ball. Bryant just was had his hands up. 
We were saying uh, to ourselves and talking with other members of, of the media, say they did a lot of timing routes. They weren't really just trying to look for an open man, letting the play develop. Well, that time it worked in their favor. Howard just threw it up, not his best pass, which it makes even more of a foolish decision for Bryant. <laughs> Carl just saw one of the Red Raider players, uh, Shamar Hall, the... Uh, I believe some of the dining top players were talking as though, you know, about that penalty. He was doing a little dance pointing to the scoreboard. He did it twice. And then the Whippet faithful were chanting, you can't do that. And Dupree Bryant then pointed to the scoreboard. So the old scoreboard answer. And, of course, the scoreboard always the greatest telltale of what's going on in the game. And, Carl, something that we didn't know why we weren't seeing in the first half, it is a Will Howard run. Not, not sure why we didn't see that on quarterback sneaks, but he did it there, and he's been effective this season. Yeah, that was a strong move by Howard there. It was a design play, Mikey, to get him outside and get some yardage. Effective play, get him five yards. And they're winning the battle of the Brandywine over downtown East. Howard actually led the Whippets in rushing in that game. He had 83 yards rushing. Carl, this game is going to start getting chippy. Uh, this is why a couple years ago in this game, when Coatesville got a win, their players were running out on the field and were making their victory known. Uh, these are schools that, even though West has only existed since the 03 04 school year, this isn't. Downingtown West versus Coachville. This is Whippets versus Red Raiders. Again, this is a rivalry that goes back to 1913. Third and two. And the Coatesville defense comes up with a big stop on third and two. Carl, it's just a simple matter of the Coatesville defense is making the stops they need to. The Whippet defense, although they had one or two in the first half, consistently is not. Yeah, especially in the run game, Mikey. They have shut down the run pretty completely. A one-yard loss on third and two. They had second and third and fourth and ones they could not convert in the first half. Howard in the shotgun. And Carl Coatesville jumped off sides, but they got back. Howard runs it. He's got the first down. He's still going inside the 30. Got to be tackled down at the 26. Big play by Will Howard there, Mikey, as he shows his athleticism and running ability and his strength. And you can see how aggressive that Coatesville defense is. That's about the third or fourth time tonight a player went off sides, got back in time. They've only been flagged once tonight. Howard rolls out. Does not have a receiver open. He's taking it himself. And he's obviously being more aggressive here, Mikey, in the second half. Taking it upon himself here to make some plays with his legs. Going to say that Coach Milano had uh, some choice words, perhaps said loudly to his players at halftime. Uh, and they are responding as though they've gotten the message. Now, can they capitalize? We've seen them get down the field and not score just one touchdown tonight. And it was by Max Hale. It wasn't Will Howard involved. It wasn't Tyreek Lewis involved. It wasn't Rosano. It wasn't Williams. So they need their big playmakers to step up. Second and six, ball on the 22. And it's a Downingtown West timeout. Carl, they didn't call a timeout in the first half till late in the second quarter. And we are gonna take this time out to hear from Washington Hose Company number one. The Washington Hose Company is located at 376 East Lincoln Highway, serving the city of Coatesville and the surrounding communities for almost 150 years. Our dedicated EMS staff of volunteer and career are proud to provide EMS services 24-7, 365 days a year. WHC offers first aid, CPR, AD, babysitting, and several other training for first aid and certification classes. To take a class or volunteer, please contact us at 610-384-6464. Be safe. We are back live at Cottmeyer Stadium as the Downingtown West Whippets have a second and six on the Red Raider 22-yard line. They trail by 20-7 to seven to the visiting Red Raiders. Downtown West with the chance to clinch the Chessmont National Division tonight. Their first since 2013. It's an option play. Howard takes it himself. 
He's going to be tackled inside the 10 after a whip it first down. Well, somebody lit, lit a fire. I think we know who it is under Will Howard as he's come out running the football and taking over the second quarter, the third quarter. Carl, and it's not as though he tried to run in the first half. It was unsuccessful. They just didn't give him the opportunity to. Again, very surprising. I guess they wanted to avoid him taking any unnecessary hits, but now they know they need everything in their quarterback's arsenal. Lewis on the carry, and he's holding on to the ball as tightly as he can. I believe he's going to be ruled just short of the end zone, and he is. He's going to be stopped at the inch line. Yeah, he almost got in. That was really close, Mikey. And, Carl, I just saw a, 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 a Koto player trying to draw a penalty. There was a little bit of contact between two players on the sideline, and there was a flop of Vladi Divac caliber. <laughs> I missed that, unfortunately. And if you're still watching, Jason, that call was for you. A good run by, by Tariq Lewis and making sure he held on to the football, Mikey. Second and goal, ball on the one. Howard takes it himself. And he's going to be in for the score. Will Howard gets Downingtown second touchdown of the night. The Whippets now trail 20 to 13. Carl, we were wondering why in the first half they didn't have Howard running. We're seeing in the second they're not afraid to anymore. Yeah, that was a Will Howard touchdown drive as he did most of the work with his running ability, something we did not see much of in the first half. And a big score for Downingtown. Extra point is up and good. Your score on the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. Coatesville 20, Downingtown West 14. SWI, or Service Wholesale Incorporated, is your place to go for building materials and products. They supply quality materials for the building, construction, remodeling, and lumber industries. Their motto is service with integrity. Visit them at 4810 Horseshoe Pike in Downingtown or give them a call at 610-518-5187. That's SWI. Want to give a shout out to Leone's Pizza in Downingtown for providing the ChessmontFootball.com crew with the delicious meal tonight. They're located at 102 Wallace Avenue in Downingtown next to the Kerr Park Wawa and have amazing pizza, strombolis, sandwiches, pasta dishes, and more. You can call this Downingtown Institution at 610-873-2500 or order online at leonispizzadowningtown.com. Carl, I'll tell you what, every time that I have been there with someone for their first time, They've said, wow, th this place is amazing. I had a friend come in from out of town. He said, do you have any good local Italian places? I think he was expecting like a traditional sit-down Italian restaurant with, you know, with the, the red tablecloth. Took him there and he went, wow, this is even better than I could have imagined. That co goes just short of the goal line, so it is a chance for the Red Raiders to get a return. And it turns out in the Whippets' favor as the returner is tackled at the 18-yard line. That was Terrence Gaynor on the tackle, Mikey. The brothers are certainly coming up tonight. Except for that one play by Marcus, unfortunately. Everything else has been really outstanding by them, by the brothers tonight. Let's take a look at Will Howard's quarterback sneak. A run I think Whippet Faithful were would have liked to have seen on several short down opportunities in the first half. As again, he's six foot four, Carl. He just uses his size to get in there. Big drive here, Mikey. And it's a big drive, so you put the ball in the, your big playmaker's hand to Pre Bryant as he gets a first down. Oh, there comes a flag, and that might be against the Pre Bryant, Mikey. As, some, as he wasn't happy with the way he was tackled, and I think it's coming back. Coatesville's starting to get the. Let's see what the call is going to be. It is a personal foul, and it is against Coatesville. It is against the pre-Bryant. Clearly against him. And Coach Ortega is not going to be happy about that, Mikey. No, we, they've been really strong with uh, playing a clean game tonight, just like last week, Carl. I mean... Very limited penalties. You did see a pass interference, and I'm assuming a holding and an offside, but 
They had a penalty on the opening kickoff, Carl, of yeah, the second half. The emotions are, are definitely getting uh, to some of these guys tonight, Mikey. But again, the first down stood, so it is a first and 10 again. Downtown West does something interesting here, Carl, as they have a student doing the PA announcing in the second half. Pressure on Ortega's face. He's able to avoid it, but they do bring him down. Carl, that should have been a loss of about five. Instead, it's a loss of one. So Ortega, again, using his legs... It's, it's the little things. I mean, the speech in any given Sunday, sometimes people just say, all right, it's a little bit too much in that speech. But the football is a game of inches speech is very true. They need one yard. They lost one yard there instead of five. Excuse me, they, they said two-yard loss. They, they changed it. But still, Dupree Bryant, you put the ball in his hands, 12 yards is nothing. The Whippets looking to get a stop. And Ortega is taken down inside the five. What a play by Ryan, Ryan Waters. Ryan Waters come big play. Puts Coatesville in a big hole here, Mikey. And Carl, I see Will Howard just came on the field defensively. As it is third and 21, and Coatesville is backed up at their own four. Whatever Coach Milano said, if they can get a stop here, he needs to say that every game. You want to? As Ricky tries to run, and he's going to be stopped for a gain of one. Big the series for Downingtown West. The Whippets have come out in the second half and made this a football game again, Mikey. And now they have some players that are getting animated. Their fan section is making some noise. The Coatesville sideline is looking like how Downingtown West was to start the half. And because of the missed extra point, if the Whippets can get a touchdown, they could take the lead. Coatesville had issues on extra points against Bishop Shanahan, but that wasn't missed kicks. That was issues on the snap and hold. That almost kick almost blocked. blocked. It's going to uh -oh. be, oh, it's well. muffed. Carl, what are they doing? you got to hold on to that. You cannot try and catch that ball if you're not used to it. They do recover. That was almost a very lucky break for the Red Raiders, but the Whippets are going to get the ball on the Red Raider 15. So how quickly this game has turned around here, Mikey. And now Downingtown is driving for the leading score. Howard and shotgun. Ball, a little trouble in the exchange with Pelkisson. Excuse me, Pelkisson on the carry. Carl, that's Oof. what I was talking about in the first half when I said they need to change up some of their movements to a little pre-snap motion, change it up a little bit. And they have, Mikey, and that open up a hole for Pelikson. Makes a big play. Second and one at the Coatesville six-yard line as they're driving to take the lead here, Mikey, with 5.55 to go in the third quarter. Second and one, ball of the six. It is handed off to Will Mahmoud. Still not 100% sure if we're pronouncing his name correctly, Carl. We hope we are, but we're being consistent with it at least. Yeah, it's not an easy name to pronounce. I believe it is Mahmoud. It's Mahmoud, Mikey. So the U is, is not silent. It's Mahmoud. Howard rolls out. Is he going to try and die for the end zone himself? He does. He's in for the score. Downingtown West is an extra point away from taking the lead. And the Whippet crowd is fired up. But the Coatesville faithful know they have quite an offensive team themselves. 
Wow, I'll tell you, what a turnaround here for Downingtown West in this third, in third quarter. And we have ourselves a football game. This is a huge extra point. Spencer Machowski. Good snap, good hold, good kick. The Whippets have taken the lead and they are fired up, Carl. We'll be back after this word from Chester County Transmissions. Hi, this is Andy of Chester County Transmissions. We're a full service automotive shop here in coastal Pennsylvania that also specializes in transmission and driveline repair. Just so you know, for all your automotive needs, we're here to take care of you. State inspections, whatever you need. Our number here is 610-384-2879. Good morning, Chester County Transmissions. Rich speaking. How can I help you? Please stop in, give us a call. God bless. We are back live at Kottmeyer Stadium as Downingtown West has come out to play in this second half as they lead 21 to 20 over the Coatesville Red Raiders. And Carl, what a response this team has had. Yeah, they came out with the energy and uh, got to give Coach Milano some credit here, Mikey. He obviously, whatever he told them and whatever the X's and O's are, it, uh, it abs obviously has worked. And Will Howard taking over uh, the game here has made a big difference here as he has really charged this Whippet team up. And then their defense came up real big well, on, on that opening possession Carl, by Coatesville. They gave him the chance to run the ball. But, yes, as you said, the defense, I think, was the, the biggest there. And interesting, Carl, as the Downingtown special teams lined up to do the kick, they gathered together. And then they discussed something, and they came back out. They do a little short kick, so that way Bryant can't get the return. Now, Coatesville is still going to get great field position. The Red Raiders are going to start with the ball on the 39. But I think the biggest thing on that defensive drive, Carl, uh, you had the personal foul, which backed uh, Bryant up. But then you had the back-to-back -back big play tackles on Ortega which is something that it's hard to do to wrap him up as we have an injured whip it down. We're actually going to go to a commercial here from ChessmontFootball.com. Harry! Harry! Hey, Dad. Hurry up, buddy. We're going to be late for the game. No pops. We can watch it on ChessmontFootball.com at any time. You do say. Sure thing, Coach. We can stream it live on any smart device. We are back live at Kottmeyer Stadium as the injured player Ryan Waters walks up the field. Carl, he had a big tackle on Ricky Ortega on that last drive. He did, Mikey. He's limping around here. See if he can get back in the game. Always say, though, it is always a positive uh, when the player is able to walk off the field on his own power. But he, he is uh, looking like he's going to get some, some treatment on the sideline. First and 10, ball on the 39. Bryant takes the jet sweep. It's going to be knocked out of bounds at the 46. And, Carl, I do believe that's going to be a late hit as, not surprisingly, it has gotten chippy. Both coaches are going to want to talk to their players and say, guys, we're not going to lose the game because you can't keep your emotions in check. Now, emotions can be good to have you play harder, but you got to still play smart. Yeah, and a good, a good play call by uh, Coatesville getting the ball in the hands of the pre Bryant. Always a good idea, Mikey. I think both these teams have uh, have seeded all over the years against one another. As we said, the all-time series for Downingtown West versus Coachville is Coachville leads 10 to 7, but for Whippets versus Red Raiders, it's Coachville 64, Whippets 47. Ortega takes it himself. He is hit by several whippets, but the first one was Stephen Harvey. Yeah, that's a play that usually works really well for Coastville, Mikey, with uh, 
him faking to Bryant and them running the ball. But uh, Downingtown West has done a great job of holding him tonight. Are, are any of our viewers surprised, though, that Coatesville was having a drive to potentially answer the score? I understand not wanting Bryant to get the return, but you still did a short kick and gave Coatesville a good field position. Pass is complete to Debris. He's got another first down. He's a weapon of weapons, Mikey. They just, uh, they're giving him the short game, but the problem is he can run after the catch. When he goes to Villanova, Carl, if he plays offense, they better get ready to put his name in some record books if he stays healthy. Yeah, he could definitely make an impact with Villanova. And he's going there with Ricky Ortega. Same route, Carl. You pick up 10, 11, 12 yards. You might as well keep doing it. Yeah, they, they, you know, the thing is he's got the, obviously, the ability to go right past you, so. Yeah, if you try and do press and jam him up, he's got such great recovery speed or such a great afterburner that after you press him, he's going to get behind you. But if you give him the cushion, you give him a chance to make a play in space. Certainly building his stats tonight, Mikey. Ortega takes it himself. Going to be tripped up. No gain on the play. As you see, a Coatesville lineman limping a little bit. Quadir Jacobs walking a little gingerly after that play. And he's still trying to get himself right, Carl. I, I think he should be going down to get an injury timeout because he looks like he's in some pain, but he's going to stay in the game. Take it. Throws it up. Passes incomplete. Don't do Dupree Bryant there. Put it Please. where his man could get it. Big play here, Mikey. Carl, yep. if they don't get this, do you go for the field goal to take the lead, but you've had issues with an extra point? Last week you had issues with snaps and holes. Or do you go for it? Well, yeah. This play is going to determine a lot because yeah. is they going to need 10 yards or is it going to be closer? Ortega takes it himself. He's got room to run. He spins. And, Carl, he's forcing himself near the end zone. They're going to stop him short at the one. you got to go for it here, Carl. Now you do. And, um, well, that was a uh, – what a play by Ricky Ortega there. So Mike. much space, though. Yeah, but, you know, he was really stopped at the five. And they couldn't bring him down. They almost He just about got in. Will this be Ortega's third quarterback sneak run of the night? As you see several Whippet players trying to get the student section to make some noise. Have to think it's going to be a sneak. And it is. He lunges forward. Still no ruling yet. And he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Ricky Ortega. His third quarterback sneak touchdown of the night. And Coatesville answers, Carl. They're going to go for two to make it a seven-point game. And it's a toss. Trying to get space, and the Whippets get the stop. Carl, big play for the Downingtown West defense. They give up the touchdown, but they get the stop on the two-point conversion. A little surprised that Coachville has not run the ball with their running backs as much tonight, but maybe you know they're seeing Bryant's having his way tonight. Yeah, when you can just give the ball to Bryant, uh, that's, that's what you do. That's smart football, smart coaching. But I'll tell you, Mikey, I, I think the, one of the keys to this game is the health of Ricky Ortega, that he's back, because he has really taken a load of, you know, off uh, the rest of the running game by him being able to run it himself. 
even though he hasn't had his gr a great running game that we're used to, he still made some big plays with his feet. And it's been an important part of the game. Stephen C. Brown covers a thing or two because he's seen a thing or two. That's right, Stephen C. Brown is your local farmer's insurance agent, and he's located in Downingtown. Looking for home insurance, auto insurance, or something else? Give him a call at 610-590-4181 or contact him at sbrown2 at farmersinsurance.com. They are farmers. Dun, 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 dun. Also want to give a shout out to Wegmans Food Markets. Wegmans is a proud supporter of Chestmont Football and ChestmontFootball.com. Apply at Wegmans.com slash careers. Well, he was with a chance to return, but again, nowhere to go. This kick coverage has been fantastic for Coatesville, Carl. Yes, it has, Mikey. Flying around the football. Let's see if uh, Downingtown West can keep that momentum going on offense, scoring on their first two drives. 64-yard drive and then the short 15-yard drive. And I'll take it up the middle. Not a ton of room to run, though. I want to thank everybody watching right now on ChessmontFootball.com. I want to remind you, this game is going to be archived on ChessmontFootball.com, as are all of our broadcasts. So there's an injured Red Raider down. Take a chance to hear from our friends at Beaver Creek Tavern. Whether looking for the best burgers in Chester County, a place to host your private event, or a relaxing place to enjoy daily food and drink specials, Beaver Creek Tavern has you covered. Serving classic American fare with gluten-free and vegetarian options available. To get the party started, go to 1350 Bondsville Road in Downingtown or call 484-593-0481. We'll see you there. Howard's pass is complete. It's a big gain for the Whippets. It's still going down the field. Finally tackled was Will Mahmood. How do you like that? Well, Mahmoud has come up with some big plays here tonight, Mikey. Carl, he was wide open, and I think he it's was. a player that Coach O'Man forgot about on that route. Hurry up offense for the Whippets. And I think it was uh, big, Mikey, that Abdul Stewart was not in the game for that play defensively. Lewis on the run. He picks up. See, the ref on the far side of the field had it as a three-yard gain. The ref on the near side has spotted it as a one-yard gain. Yeah, He's closer to the play. It's a one-yard gain. It's a one-yard gain. There's no way he got three-yard on that, that play. Artie Burgess, who's had a, a great game on defense also, Mikey, uh, makes the tackle. Yeah, the Whippet offense has had trouble running to the outside. As we saw in that fourth and one, it's that Coatesville speed. They've had a little bit more success up the middle. They really had success when they got Howard involved. As he takes the carry there. That's been a successful play for them in this second, uh, third quarter. Mikey, the fake run, and then Will Howard runs up the middle using his strength and speed to get another big play for them. Carl, I know it's a tough job, but the, the official on the far side of the field was just another yard and a half off on his spot, but the ref on the near side, very accurate on his spot there. Third and three, ball on the 36. Unless there's a big loss, have to think this is four down territory. No, no questions. Definitely four down territory. Same play, but this time. Oh, Howard does take it himself again. He even faked you out a little on Mikey, but it, it, it didn't fake Coatesville out. Yeah, I, I thought that they were going to give it to Lewis because although we're seeing that they're not afraid to have Howard take some, uh, some hits, you, you don't want him to take too many in a row. No gain there on that play, Carl. Yep. So Fourth. now we, we have a real big, uh, obviously a big play here, Mikey, in yeah. this game. As we're nearing the end of the third quarter. Yeah, the Whippets were able to take the lead. Coatesville answered. 
Donatel West with the chance to answer back. But they are... Oh, we have a timeout by Coachville. As there was another Coachville player jumping there, uh, Carl. But I believe Coach Ortega saw something he did not like. And we're going to show you a commercial for something we think you will like. Let's hear from about the Coatesville Christmas Parade. Chester County's largest hometown Christmas parade is coming to town on Saturday, December 7th. The Coatesville Christmas Parade marches down Lincoln Highway starting at 10 a.m. Come see Philly String Bands, the Eagles Pep Band, and new this year, Riley's Raiders and the 76ers Sixters. There will be fire trucks, antique cars, floats, community groups, and costume characters. And of course, Santa Claus himself will be there. To register to march or for more information, go to CoachvilleChristmasParade.com. We are back live at Kottmeyer Stadium in Diantown, Pennsylvania. You're watching the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. We have a huge fourth and three for Downingtown West. Carl, it's been a mixed bag of success for Downingtown on fourth downs. They had one they converted on the drive that ended with the fumble, but then they had a fourth down late in the half when they really needed a score, and they did not convert. Now it's fourth and three. Looks like the same play call again, and Howard takes it again. The third play in a row. Carl, I think he got it. And I'm not sure, Mikey. The ref on the near side of the field is oh, spotting the mark, ball. With that wow, mark, that is an even good. better spot than I thought he would get. I Me thought too. he had it with the original. Where I thought it was, I thought you should have had the ball just over the 33-yard line. He has it at the 32 and a half. Gutsy I, play call to call the same play three times in a row, Carl. Really, and I, I wasn't sure whether he got it, Mikey, so he did get a good good spot. Uh-oh. Oh, and Howard almost falls down. Do you think they would have benefited from not doing the play call there as the quarter ended as he was dropping back and just a broken play as Howard. Jordan Engler. Jordan Engler makes the big play, Mikey, a big loss. Howard came down awkwardly on that one. So that's going to do it for the third quarter. It is Coatesville 26, Downingtown 21. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this word from Miller's Insurance. Chester County's most trusted insurance agency. Whether it's for your automobile or your home, a life insurance policy or coverage for your business. Since 1975, Miller's Insurance Agency has been protecting homes, property, people, and businesses throughout Chester County. Miller's guides you every step of the way, providing the best options, getting you the right policy that works best for you. Contact us today for a no-cost consultation. Miller's Insurance Agency. We're here today for your tomorrows. Visit online at miainc.com. Sardella Eye Associates has been providing the very best in eye care to families in Chester County for over 20 years. Sardella Eye Associates provide comprehensive eye exams, treatment and management of eye disorders, dry eye therapy, eyeglasses, contact lenses, and more. Go see them at their conveniently located offices at 1810 East Lincoln Highway in Coatesville and give them a call at 610-466-9909. Oh, just a reminder, you too can advertise the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com by calling 610-269-5000 for sponsorship opportunities. 610-269-5000. Next week, it's Coatesville playing here at Cottmeyer Stadium against the Downingtown East Cougars. Flag on the play, and it's a legal procedure, Carl. Back to back. Bad plays for the Whippets. They did not have to snap the ball before the end of the quarter. They take a sack on a player where Howard is off balance. And then a legal procedure, second and 27. Carl, you were within five points of a team that was dominating you in the first half. You yeah. get a big fourth down conversion, and now you're going the wrong way. They're all the way back at the 49 now. It's going to be tough. They need to get at least half of it back here, Mikey. And they've not had as many of the big plays we're used to seeing this team have as the top-rated offense in Chessmont. Howard drops back. He's got a man open in the middle of the field. It's Julian Williams. Nice chunk of change back. That's what they needed, Mikey. And you know what made that play work, me? The pass protection was there for one of the few times. Will Howard had plenty of time to throw. 
wasn't sure where he was going to go as he had another receiver that uh, I don't know if he was open, had maybe a half a step, but I think that was the safer throw. It's a third and 13. They're in four down territory unless they get uh, a negative yardage play here. So do they go for the first down? Do they try and pick up seven or eight yards? Yeah, I would, I would try to pick up seven or eight, get close. Howard rolls out, pressure coming after him, throws it up. And it is intercepted by Dupree Bryant. Carl, he does it all. And there's a flag, though. So no matter what happens on this return, it's coming back. But it is a big turnover for the Red Raiders. But, Carl, that's going to be coming all the way back. Which is important, Mikey, because uh, that could have been the play of the game if, if they could have gotten the ball at the 45. And, Carl, that's almost kind of like a punt, depending on where they put it back at. That's that's correct, Mikey. Well, you go up against a great player like Bryant, you're, you're going to get burnt sometimes. That ball was kind of just thrown up, though. It was thrown up for either one to catch it, and Bryant being a wide receiver. And let's take a look, Carl, at the penalty uh, on that play on the interception. We have some technical difficulty there. All right, so Howard, he just kind of threw it up, Carl, because he had the pressure in his face, and he tried to get it all there instead of trying to get it done on a fourth down. As there you go, Carl, completely late on the play and from behind. So, Carl, this is big because the ball is on the two-yard line. Downingtown West cannot allow a big play here. But they also got to make sure that they don't let Debris Bryant catch it from five yards out and run for a first down, which has been the, uh, the modus operandi. Of the or does Ortega field. just do a run up the middle? He is playing Bryant closer, if you see there, Mikey. And Ortega has it. It's going to be stopped at the four, giving them a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, good play. As we see a player a little slow to get up, but... Obviously very important for Kutzel to get a first down here. As you know, the last time they punted from the end zone was not good. Second and eight, ball on the four. This is a key drive. Again, that was almost better than a punt because of where the ball was spotted for Downingtown. But turnovers have been a problem the last few weeks. I believe now minus nine in the last four weeks in the plus. Sorry, no, minus nine against Coatesville in their last four games. Oh, but there's a big play for the Red Raiders. That's what you did not want to see happen if you're a Downingtown West fan. As not only do they get away from their own end zone, they get a first down. Yeah, that was Abdul Stewart, Mikey, making the big play. And that play has been the, the key to Coatesville tonight. That short passing game has gotten them out of a little hole here. So even if they did not score on this drive, Coatesville is at least going to be shifting field position. If you have a team backed up that far, you cannot allow a first down to happen. But Ortega and his receivers, their execution flawless when they need to be. Ortega on the run. He makes a man miss. And Carl... I don't think he's going to get caught from behind. Oh, no, yeah, he is, he actually. Is. There's a lot of speed there. <laughs> Forgot for a second he's coming off from an injury. Yeah, but, again, a, a, you know, a big play by a, a four-year senior, great quarterback. He has been one of the best in the state for the four years, Mikey, and he comes up with a big play here. Let me say a fully healthy Ricky Ortega. I don't know if they, they stop him. Possibly. Yeah. But they had the ball on their own two-yard line. They're now at the Whippet 30. And there is 9.14 left on the clock, but Carl, time is going to start becoming the Whippet's enemy. Ortega throws it away. Smart play there, not taking the hit.
Again, Downingtown West with a win tonight will clinch the Chestmont National Division for their first time since 2013. Coatesville with the win tonight and a win next week over at Downingtown East would win for the fourth consecutive year. Ortega passes incomplete. Was intended for Stewart. Westchester East leads Rustin 27-7. They can clinch the Chestmont American Division tonight. Third and 10. Ball on the 30. 9.03 left to go here in the fourth quarter. It's Coatesville 26, Downtown West 21. The Chestmont Game of the Week on ChestmontFootball.com. Short pass, trying to make a playmaker make a big play, but the Whippet defense comes up big. And Carl, the Red Raiders have an opportunity to pin the Whippets back deep, or do they go for it? You know, it's a tough call. I, I mean, I I would punt it or try to pin them down because if they get no yardage here, it, down in town West gets the ball in pretty good field but position. if they punt it and it goes in the end zone, it's at the 20. 20. If they gain no yards here, it's only a 12-yard 12 12 difference. Yard. If you get the first down, you eat more time off the clock yeah. and have the potential to score. I like them going for this, Carl. I don't think we're going to see them take a delay a game again. No, nah, they, they won't take a delay. And they are going for it. And number six has a step on his man. Pass is complete. That is DeMonte Reason. This is just a great play by Ricky Ortega. He lays it in there. And Reason beautiful. showing great speed. The man who was covering him was playing up. And Reason just blew by him. And that's why you go for that, Carl, because this is a team that makes needing Big 12 plays. yards look like needing two yards. Yes, and it's been that way for the last four years. I've been broadcasting these games with you, Mikey. Ricky Ortega making the big plays. Usually it's uh, not as close. First and goal ball on the five. Ortega takes it himself. He's going to be tackled for a loss. That was Williams on the tackle, but Carl, they had the ball on their own two. They had a fourth and... Henderson did come back to defeat Sun Valley. Their third win of, their, of the year, and Carl, their third divisional win this year. It's a team that went winless last year, lost their coach over the summer. Coach Lenardi has done a great job with those boys this season, Carl. He, he has, Mike. He's done a terrific job. They've been very competitive, too, for most of the games. And we saw them lose week one, but they were, they were in that game. Ortega throws it up. He's getting pressured. And it is incomplete. Carl, great job defensively Terrence Gaynor, by Mikey. Terrence Gaynor. It was in Dupree Bryant's hands. It, it, was, it was actually a touchdown, Mikey, but at the last second, he punched it out. Carl, they're sending in the kicking team to go up by eight. We saw against Bishop Shanahan, they had two extra points that were no good due to issues on the snap and hold. This is a big kick here, Mikey. Yeah, we saw a missed kick tonight. This one was actually missed. It is Pierce Hadzor in for the 27-yard field goal attempt. Kick is up, and it is... No good, Carl. Oh, it is good. Wow, I thought that was short. It, it is good. It didn't have much leg, but it had just enough. So it is still a one possession game, but Carl, what a drive by Coatesville. Yeah, over a 90 yard drive, of course, set up by that big run by Ricky Ortega. Big possession there as. They take an eight-point lead here. Little Chef proudly supports ChessmontFootball.com and wants everyone to enjoy the rest of the Chessmont season. Little Chef is located at 152 Strode Avenue in Coatesville and serves delicious food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Whether it's classic breakfast staples, homemade soups, tasty sandwiches, or blue plate specials, you can count on Little Chef to always leave you satisfied. 
And guess what? They can cater your event as well. Order online at littlechef.us or give them a call at 610-384-3221. And folks, are you in the market for a new home or have a house to sell? Contact Kim Moralia, real estate with Kim Passion. As a lifelong resident of the area, her expertise is focused in Chester, Montgomery, and Delaware counties. For 15 years, Kim's passion for helping her clients reach their goals always shines through whether you're buying or selling your home. Kim is an award-winning realtor with Coldwell Banker Preferred in Exton. Check out her website at KimSellsTheSuburbs.com or give her a call at 484-368-9450. It's a short kick, so it's not going to be Williams on the return. And Carl, the Coachville kick coverage does it again. As I believe that's Lewis on the return. Big drive here, Mikey, as they need to score a touchdown and get the two-point conversion to get this game tied now. And then their defense has to come up with a stop. It's a tall order. See if they can come up with a big play here, Mikey. And it is a run up the middle. As that is Hale on the carry. Short game. Carl, you're going to have an interview with the winning coach tonight, and right now it's looking like Coach Ortega, but this Whippet offense has shown some fight in the second half, so it could be Coach Milano. Ortega drops back. Pass is complete to Sean Pelkison. Nice catch there by Sean as he had to go down and get it, and he did. First down. Six minutes left to go in regulation because we do have a chance of a tie ball game happening here. And the high school uh, overtime rule is much like the college overtime rule. Both teams will get the ball. Uh, but we are still a touchdown, two-point conversion away from that possibly happening. It's Howard on the option play. Lewis lowers his head, and he is going to get a nice gain. Going to be stopped after nine, it looks like. Yeah, nice run by Tariq Lewis there as he showed his power getting to the outside with great, good pursuit. Coming up Actually, with a nine-yard game. Nope, that's the first down, Carl. Well, they gave him a first down. There you go. So say they needed to get to the 44, 10. had to wait for where they were going to place the ball. Coach, uh, Downingtown and Coachville each have two timeouts left. And since the Whippets are trailing, the clock is their enemy. They don't want to have to call any timeouts, especially if they can score and don't get a two-point conversion. Howard drops back. He's going deep. And it's just too far out of the outstretched hands of Gabe Nunez. First time we've said his name tonight, Carl. Just a little too much on it. Nunez had a step. He did. It was, that was close. It just missed him. I don't know if he... Had the hands to come down with it if he could get it on there, but uh, but Gabe almost came up with a big play. I like the call, Mikey. Downtown West has certainly played better football, especially on offense in the second half. Oh, the ball Ooh. comes out. Howard falls on it, but now it's going to bring up a third and long. Carl, third and 14 now. Yeah, it's going to be tough, Mikey. And even though they have two timeouts, they might have to go for it, Carl. Yeah, if they do, that's that could be the game if they have to go for it and don't connect. And Howard can't just throw it up as he did on the third and long that they had on the drive where Bryant had the interception. I'll tell you what I would not do. I would not try and go after to pre-Bryant or whoever he's covering. Howard. Ball is 
complete, but it's just gonna get back just shy of the line of scrimmage, Carl. It's incomplete, Carl. The official who was really far behind the play had said it is incomplete. Fourth and 14. And Carl, they are gonna punt. Yeah, they, I understand the decision because there is time left and you want to show confidence in your defense. And they have two timeouts. But if you kick it inbounds, Dupree Bryant's going to have a chance on the return. Or if you kick it out of bounds, do you take a little bit off of it because you're trying to angle the kick more? Downingtown West has had their opportunities tonight, Carl, but they've been the team has made more mistakes. Good kick, but Bryant with the chance on the return. He's too, too switching fields. It's going to go out of bounds at the 39. Coatesville Flower Shop is 70 years old and still going strong. This family-owned business is located at the corner of 3rd Avenue and East Lincoln Highway in Coatesville. Whatever the occasion, you can rely on their years of experience for expert advice and designs. They've been named one of FTD's top 200 florists in the nation for 10 consecutive years. With four generations of the DePedro family working there, they're happy to go the extra mile to meet your needs. And they deliver. Call them at 610-384-2677. Mention this ad tomorrow only, coupled with the Red Raider win. In tonight's game, you can buy one dozen roses, get one dozen roses, red roses free. One dozen roses free, free. red roses are excluded. Oh, Carl, I believe we're going to have a flag as there's two players going at it on the Coatesville sideline. I couldn't tell if it was a Coatesville player pushing a West player or if it was a Coatesville player holding on as a West player was pushing them. But we were, were saying we were going to see this tonight and I see Coatesville players pointing as though it's against the Whippets and you cannot do that Carl. You cannot give first downs and give up field position. I haven't seen any movement of the ball. Is it a dead foul? Both teams, Mikey? It, sh it is against Coatesville, and it is against West, and that's probably what it should be. Yeah. So it is offsetting penalties. Second and nine, 409 left to go in the fourth quarter. Coatesville leads by eight. Carl, they're a couple first downs away from putting this ball game away. And they're going to take as much time off the clock as they can. They snap it two seconds left on the play clock. Smart move there, just staying in bounds. That is Abdul Stewart on the reception. Folks, I want to tell you one more time about the Red Run Challenge, which is like the fourth annual Red Run Challenge takes place December 7th before the famous Coatesville Christmas Parade. Registration is now open, so go to https colon backslash backslash runsignup.com slash rrc4 and register today. Cash awards to the top racers and medals by age group, as well as prizes for the most festive participants. So grab your tutu, your costume, or your holiday bling, lace up your sneaks, and race for the win. I'll tell you a little bit more about this great event after this next play. Ortega throws it up way too far for Bryant, and that stops the clock, Carl. That's big because now it is fourth down. The Whippets will get the ball back. But to finish telling you about the great Red Run Challenge, the proceeds from this festive 5K race and walk go 100% to helping young adults in Chester County with their next step in life. We see the potential in all. Come for the race, stay for the parade. Well, the Whippet defense did what they needed to do, Carl. As they got a stop, they didn't have to use a timeout. And they're going to get the ball back with right around three minutes left. Caught a low line drive kick. And Williams with the big return. And he's going up the sideline. He's inside the 30, inside the 25. He's going to be tackled down at the 21. Carl, you cannot give Williams a chance on a return like that. And he actually bobbled it a little. So now you have Downingtown West 
down by eight. 2.54 to go, two timeouts. So if they get a touchdown and don't get the two, they still have a chance to get the ball back, but they cannot be careless with the ball and they cannot have any more foolish penalties. The Coatesville defense has come up strong so many times tonight. Can they do it again? Do they have Howard try to run the ball? Do they get some trickeration involved? Lewis in motion. Howard throws it to Lewis. He's got nowhere to run, Carl. That almost kind of looked like the type of play you'd see for a maybe a double pass, but I didn't see anybody running a route. And they actually lose two yards on that play. Carl, we said, cannot have any negative plays if you're a if you're the Whippets. Coachville defense, hey, they've played in so many big games. A lot of seniors on this team. They are not phased by the moment. Hey, Downingtown West gets a big play. Come out, make a big play themselves. Second and 12, 2 12 left to go in the game. We said that they still have time if they don't get a uh, touchdown and two point conversion, but not much. Pass is complete to Lewis. You know, he's going to be holding on to the ball tight. He is tackled at the 16. 17, excuse me. Shamar Hall with the tackle there, Mikey. Preventing a first down. Pickup of five. Now it's just 145 left to go. Carl, looks like it's going to come down to this drive because the Whippets are not really in any hurry. It would definitely come down to this drive. And, of course, you know, they got to get in first, but the two-point conversion will follow. And their short yardage play calls have not been the most effective tonight. Option. Carl, it's going to be another fourth down. Well, this will <laughs> like decide it here, Mikey. Wouldn't be surprised if they call a timeout here to get the play call they need because at, at this point, if they don't convert, that's going to be the game. They do not call a timeout. There's just 20 There's twenty seconds left on the play clock. but Yeah, that, that will be the game, Mikey. Two timeouts, they won't be able to stop it. As we're under a minute to go here. This is the game right here. And you see a back in the backfield that's only been in for one play. Coachville actually calls the timeout. There's your timeout. And we thank Carl for joining us during live gameplay as he's getting ready to head down for the uh, post-game interview with the victorious coach, which we still do not know. So, Carl, we might be seeing you back up in the press box potentially if this game goes to overtime as both teams want to make sure they know exactly what they're supposed to do. If you're Downingtown West, I think you're going to see Howard in the shotgun give him a chance to maybe make a play with his arms or his legs. If it is a straight run, it'll maybe throw uh, Sprite Coachville out a little bit. If they, I don't know, do they, do they go four receivers and just one back and try and spread them out? Do they have Howard try to run it? Let's see what play they come up with. This is right near where they got stopped on a fourth down earlier in the game. This is the game right here, folks. Fourth and two, 52 seconds left in the game. Howard is in the shotgun. Howard takes himself, he's gonna be stopped short. That's gonna be the game. Coatesville is going to win. Downingtown West unbeaten season is gone. Barring a miracle at the Meadowlands type play, it's going to be the Coatesville Red Raiders with a chance to win the Chessmont Division again next week if they beat Downingtown East. Downingtown just could not get it done in short yardage tonight. So Ricky Ortega and Dupree Bryant will have never lost to Downingtown West. And if they win next week, they will have never lost to a Downingtown school, period. What an effort by Coatesville tonight. 
You have Ricky Ortega, three touchdown runs. Dupree Bryant making amazing runs after the catch. Coming up with the big defensive play. People said this was a coachable team that was not as strong as years past. In some ways, I think the defense is even stronger this year. And Ortega, smartly not taking the knee right away, wasting an extra second or two. What an intelligent player, and he, he's going to Villanova. They don't have dumb players there, folks. Oh, and in a chant to not endear themselves to the Downingtown Faithful Coatesville fans with the This Is Our House chant, but it really has been over these last few years. Ricky Ortega and Dupree Bright have never lost a chess mock game. An unbelievable stat. Downingtown does have one more timeout, so Ricky Ortega waiting again to take the knee. Then he does. Downingtown calls their final timeout. So Ortega needs to do one more snap. And it will be Coatesville, a win away from another Chessmont National Division title. Because if they beat Downingtown East, no matter what West does next week, Coatesville would have the tiebreaker. And Ricky's dad, uh, Coach Matt Ortega, I continually am just impressed by his skills as a coach because he always gets his team ready for every game as Ortega does take the knee there and that's going to be the final snap of the game we have 25 seconds left on the clock it's running down but coach Ortega has taken his team to a state final he's taken his team to the semifinals he's gone up against the big boys in St. Joe's prep teams that recruit and has given them their best shot and now this is the best Downingtown West team they have ever faced and they still get the win. And that's going to do it as Coatesville are the victors over Downingtown West 29-21. to A very impressive performance for Coatesville tonight. And for those who were saying oh, Coatesville is not as strong this year, they're only scoring 29 points a game. They scored 29 tonight, and they were very impressive. For Downingtown West, they still have a lot to play for this season as they will be making the playoffs as well. But they wanted this one. They wanted to win the division. They wanted to beat the Red Raiders, especially on their home field. Now, this is something that I have seen before uh, for, uh, unfortunately, this game where um, you see the Coachville players taunting the west sideline. That's not something that Coach Ortega, I, I believe, supports. But you know what? If you're a downtown fan and you're not happy about it, your team should have won the game. It's, it's plain and simple. You don't want that to happen. You got to defend your house. They put forth a good effort tonight. Wasn't enough. It is a Coatesville team that has run Chessmont, and they got the victory tonight. So we are going to have Carl Runman with a post-game interview with Coach Matt Ortega, someone he's gotten for very familiar with talking to as they have won yet again in the chess mark. We'd like to thank everyone for attending. Drive safely and take your time getting out. Just a reminder, this game can be watched anytime on chessmontfootball.com. 
And we're going to take a look at how we got to this final score with some replays from this highly entertaining game. Ortega with his first of three quarterback sneak touchdowns of the night. Then you had Howard handing it off to Hale. He had some success in short yards tonight, but overall the Whippets did not. So you see Ortega in again. Then it's Bryant just showing how dangerous he is with the ball and just a little bit of space. Then Howard with his rushing touchdown. He did not have a carry, I believe, in the first half. That first drive of the second, he was a man possessed. But Ricky Ortega, three touchdown runs on the night. And then you have the field goal, which made it an eight-point game. I thought that kick was short, but it had just enough leg. And that is how we got to this final score of 29 to 21. As Coach Ortega has finished talking to his players, but uh, there is a lot of press at this game. So Carl is getting ready to talk to him here in just a moment. We want to thank you for tuning into the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. And remind you, next week, watch these Coach for Red Raiders try to go for another Chessmont National Division crown as they play the Downingtown East Cougars, a Cougar team that was victorious tonight over the Bishop Shanahan Eagles. Again, the Chessmont National Division is now Downingtown East, Downingtown West, Coatesville, Bishop Shanahan and Avongrove. You had Westchester East and Westchester Henderson move over to the Chessmont American Division, a move that has been very successful for Westchester East as they were playing Ruston tonight for a chance to win the Chessmont American Division crown. The last update we saw from that game was East was up 27-7 to late in that game as we try to see if that was a final score. And it was a final. So congratulations to Westchester East winning the Chessmont American Division. It is a Westchester East team that had some really lean years. That's American, an American division that was pretty much owned by Rustin and Unionville. But this year, it was Westchester East and Kennett doing a great job all season. As it looks like Carl has coach Ortega as they're getting ready to, to go and gonna say to take it away, Carl. Coach Ortega, great game tonight between two excellent football teams. Lots of players came up big tonight led, led by Ricky and, and Dupree. Yeah, you know, it was a total team effort tonight and you know, we made some mistakes and our kids found a way and I'll tell you what, tonight was absolutely a team win. You know, the kids just believed in what we're doing. They they battled through a ton of adversity. We got up, they came back, they, they, they took the lead in the, in, the, in the third quarter and our kids just found a way to come back and make it happen and that's what good teams do. You know, it's not the end. We're going to see, you know, we're going to see them again in the playoffs and, uh, you know, hats off to them. They played their butts off too. I mean, that's, that's a great day. That's probably the best downtown team they've had. You know, one of the best I've been here in 11 years. And we're happy to come in here and get the, get the W. Yeah, I guess you got a little afraid with that uh, big punt return. They got down there pretty close. They really did come back in the second half. Absolutely. Our back's against the wall right there. You know, not punt. And our kids found a way to stop on fourth and two. And I'm just proud of my kids, my, my guys. Great game tonight, Coach. Yep, thanks. Thanks. Yep. Great game. Matt, just hold you up for one minute. Your first one is this is Carl Rudman for ChessmontFootball.com, 3CTVLive.com. Back to Mikey Dunn in the booth. Thank you, Carl. And we want to thank all of you for watching tonight. I want to thank you for tuning in all season as we have our final game of the regular season next week, Coatesville versus Giants on East. So for Carl Rudman and the entire ChessmontFootball.com crew, I'm Mikey Dunn saying good night, everybody.